everybody to make sure you're muted and I'll lead um, the pledge. Okay, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, before we get started with our uh, agenda, I just want to um, probably what everybody's feeling and just um, just send really positive thoughts out to the firefighters and um, anybody that is being um, affected by all these fires. Um, it's a terrible thing. Um, and you want to help but they have a lot of help and we don't know what to do with it. So just, uh, you can send money if you want or um, just continue to have positive thoughts for them and hopefully we get some rain pretty soon. Um, okay, we're gonna move on to our agenda. We have written communication. Um, board, I have that we received um, since the last meeting. Um, a few more. Uh, emails regarding reopening um, different um, subjects there. We received an email today regarding from a college student regarding a resource center. Um, so that more on that maybe later. Um, I received a, uh, just a general question regarding the election for the um, school board election. Um, is there anything else that anybody else received board other than that? I think Nothing for me, Debbie. Thank you. Covered everything that I got. Yeah. Okay. Very Same. good. All right. Um, okay. Board member comments. Uh, we'll start with uh, Christy. Uh, yes. Uh, I know we're in new times here, and last night I enjoyed uh, Mr. Garcia's opening of the high school, and I thought it was very well orchestrated to go between you know, the counseling and Shane and everybody and very well done, set a nice tone for the year. So we've done so much work of in the summer to get ready for this. So it's nice to see all that come to fruition and us to commence on what will be a very exciting year. John Path? I, I can't add to that. Thank you, Christy. That was <laughs> right exactly where I was. Thank you so much. No, I have nothing further. All right, Brian? Uh, no, I enjoyed um, last night. It was a little weird, um, but good. Weird, good. Good, weird. Um, I like, you know, it's what I'm used to doing during back to school nights is kind of lurking. And what I didn't like is you can't lurk. You can't just kind of stand in the doorway for a little bit and, and watch and then bounce on to the next one. You're in there, you're in there in equal space with everybody else. So, um, but it was nice to, to see some folks and reconnect again. Um, and I think that's all. I do want to encourage folks in the, um, that for anybody that is having issues and things like that, that it's like that there are ears and eager to hear and read and help with the issues that um, they might be having. And but we have to know about it in order to help. And I think a lot of folks these days are very, it's very easy to go up on Nextdoor or Facebook and start to say whatever is eating away at you, but that's not where we do our business. We do our business here. And um, so I would just encourage people to think about that before they go and, and do try to solve the problem through Facebook or next door. Cause that's not the forum. It's not, you know, there for that. This is here for that. So anyway, that's all I got. All right. Thank you, Brian. Um, John Walton. Uh, thanks Debbie. Yeah. Just a few things. One, um, I, I appreciate you saying that about the challenges we're faced with, you know, I think between COVID and the fires now it's, it's really stressful for our, our students and families and staff and communities. So, I appreciate that we're all sensitive to that. Um, you know, that is, like you said, when we get the letter about the resource center, that's one of the things that caught my attention. I thought that was a pretty interesting idea that uh, Ms. Miller and Ms. Uh, Jayla Ellis came up with 
Uh, I think it was modeled a little bit after what they're doing in Monterey. And I know Ralph said he was looking into that a little bit. So I hope we can talk about that some more in the future. I think, unfortunately, you know, with all these things going on, I'm afraid, you know, we as a school district may become more and more of a needed partner in the community to uh, address some of those needs. And I know it warrants probably a, a greater conversation. So I hope we can hope we can talk about that more at a, at a future board meeting. Um, I did want to put out a little advertisement, if I could. Also, uh, Ms. Martinez and I are on a uh, housing. I see Director Martinez there. Um, the City of Pacific Grove has started a, a working group called Welcome Home, Creating a More Affordable Future. And uh, they're having meetings, community meetings, to get input in the coming weeks. And I sent some flyers to Ralph and Mandy in hopes that we could get it added to the public record in the future. If people want to participate and sign up, we're trying to get the word out. I know Ms. Martinez is going to reach out to the, the principals and the PTAs about maybe distributing them that way. But I'm going to hold this up. You can always read this. On the See how we're going to do this on video. I know this won't work, but maybe a little up, a little higher. There you go. Perfect. Right? Go. All there right. Go. I'm going to hold this for a minute if everybody wants to write that information I'll down. say, everybody, quick, take a picture. That's take right. Or you can replay it on YouTube later and, uh, and uh, pause it. But uh, I really hope people participate in this. I think. Like, like everything else we're talking about, I think it's very important, you know, uh, ideally we'd all love to own homes in this lovely area we live in, but you know, homes are very expensive, um, space is very limited. So I think it's gonna need to be a very full conversation about how do we embrace that diversity in our community and uh, find ways to find housing, either rental housing or permanent housing uh, for the families uh, in our community that, that we value so much. So I'm, I'm excited to be part of it and appreciate being there with Director Martinez and the larger group. And I hope all the parents and community uh, participate in the input phase because I think it's, it's a great effort. Great. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, uh, we have a long agenda, so, um, but I do um, have a couple things I wanna say. Um, I unfortunately missed um, all except literally like 30 seconds of the opening of the back to school night last night. I lo got lost time and, and didn't get to go on there, but I did lurk, Brian. You can lurk really easy with your mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I lurked in quite a few of the classes and it was really great uh, setup. So whoever thought of that um, and put that together, a uh, great job. Uh, it was actually really pretty neat. Um, and then I, I, I know we're going to talk about uh, COVID and back to school and all that later. Um, but I just really want to give a, a, a shout out and a, a kudos to the tech team. Uh, you guys have done fabulous job. I mean, and you're, you, I mean, you're not as so far behind the scenes because everybody needs you, but um, from, from getting, making sure we have enough bandwidth to making sure everybody has those iPads to uh, education and doing those um, virtual uh, tech learning, um, I think it's just been great. And I don't think we could have done it without you. So I just want to thank you for that. Um, and okay, so and that was it for me. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, superintendent report. Thank you, Madam President. Just a few things here. Um, number one, I just wanted to respond to um, Trustee Walton. Yes, we are. I've already started investigating the resource room and I've spoken with a few folks, uh, admin team, and everyone's very supportive of the idea. Um, so we're starting the kind of the initial look at what that might look like for us and how that could look um, in preparation for a conversation with the board. And we'll certainly, by request, we'll put that on the future agenda items. You'll see that a little bit later uh, at this board meeting. So uh, we did try looking at something like this about 10 years ago, but I think it was something before its time. So uh, I think now may very well be an important time for that. So we'll take a look at that. Um, uh, I also want to congratulate uh, uh, Principal Garcia on his first uh, Pacific Grove open house. And uh, he yeah. was the first one out the gate. And um, Boy, he set the bar high on that one. And um, I think he and uh, Assistant Principal Steinbach really did a great job. And uh, I think, I think what, what we all appreciated the most was that it was very open. He had lots of players, gave them all opportunity to talk about what they needed to do. Um, uh, he, and, and Lethal's enthusiasm just shined right through. And uh, all, right, all right, including to the PTA message of, we need you. And that finger came out, it was perfect. So <laughs> anyway, congratulations. And again, once we're just so happy to have him here with us and his leadership at the high school. So congratulations to the high school and please do pass the congratulations on to the staff for all of us. Um, uh, Principal Garcia. 
Um, the um, couple of other things also, um, I'll be sending a short little message out to our staff tomorrow, but um, also acknowledging uh, what's going on with the fires right now. It is impacting a number of our employees and as well as um, citizens around us. And um, so uh, if anyone knows of that impact, especially for our employees and some of our families, please let us know so we can see what help we can generate um, for those families and try to get them at least someplace to be for a little while. Um, but um, we we're certainly concerned about that as well. And um, so the staff will hear more about that tomorrow. Um, there uh, on September 2nd, I will be sending um, this out as well on the, um, I, I believe on the uh, message tomorrow, but uh, September 2nd at 6 p.m. is going to be a city council meeting. On the agenda for that meeting will be a discussion about the approval of a cannabis dispensary in Pacific Grove. Um, it's found its way back onto the agenda. Um, it's kind of quiet in regards to its presence so far. We don't know many details. The city will be posting specifics about that, I believe on the 24th or something to that effect. Um, so we'll be on the lookout for that. But in the meantime, um, I plan on being there. Um, I've I invited uh, Director Martinez to be there as well. And we will certainly speak to that and the high risk and um, I believe danger that it presents to our students in this community. So um, uh, anyone who would like to feel free to uh, send public comments or, or letters to the board, uh, the city council, and you're welcome to be there as well. Any details I have, I will continue to um, bring out to our parents. A um, couple of other things, uh, we will be sending out a notice tomorrow as well on the update regarding learning pods. Um, there are tutor pods, there's lots of different names for them right now. Um, basically small groups are being hosted by parents or um, in some cases, um, tutors or uh, teachers. And um, there are little learning pods that happen outside of the school district. Uh, I want to assure the community that the learning pods are not part of our district. They're not PS, uh, PGUSD sponsored. Um, we know they exist out there. While they're not in our control or our authority, um, we just want people to know that's the case. Um, and there are some restrictions for our own teachers to be participating in that during work hours. Um, I sent a memo to our teachers and everyone's very supportive. Um, we'll see a little bit more information about that tomorrow um, when on the update, but I wanted to make you aware that we are aware of it. And last but not least, um, I believe that Director Kelly will be sending some information about this, but we all are aware that um, we are in the middle of rolling blackout possibilities. Um, we went through a first round of them this past week. Um, we are receiving word from the county office the, of education that we'll be seeing more of those to come. And um, I know that a lot of parents and teachers rightfully so, are very concerned about how does that impact um, the learning environment and especially for students that will not be able to attend if the power goes out for an hour in the middle of instruction. I wanna ensure everybody that uh, we are not penalizing students for not being able to participate in during rolling blackouts. As um, Trustee um, Walton said, uh, flexibility is a key term there. So I wanna assure parents that um, we are aware that those are out of your control and we're doing the very best to roll, no pun intended, roll with them. and. Um, so um, uh, I, I know in memo we'll be going now about that as well. So don't wanna say any more at this point, we've got a long meeting, but um, that's where we're at and I'll share more during the COVID update later on. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, we are on PGUSD staff comments, uh, non-agenda items. Um, this goes for um, public comment as well. If you want to speak during that time, uh, um, you're probably familiar with this by now, but I'll still go over it. Uh, in the lower bottom middle of your um, screen, you have participants. If you click on that, you'll be able to raise your hand. Um, and the raising hand will put you in a queue and it will be as, as you are in the queue and you will get your turn. So we have a couple pop up here. Um, okay, so this is um, PGUS staff comments. Uh, Janessa W. Hi. 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 Well, well, my that, name. That's it's Jayla. Jayla. I know yes. you. <laughs> my sister's Zoom meeting. Huh. Um, so good evening. I'm I am a 2017 graduate at Pacific Grove High School, and I'm currently a student at the University of California of Sacramento, majoring in criminal justice. As an alumni and resident of PG, I am committed to the community and the serving of people in need. 
Can I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you, sorry. This is a time for staff comments, so I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that you're you're here for public comment, right? Yeah, sorry, I think okay. I- No, you're okay. I just, I wanna, I don't want everybody to get confused about that. So I am gonna ask you though to don't change your hand, just keep your hand raised and we'll come to you immediately as soon as staff is done. Okay. Okay, Thank all right, you. thank you. Okay, uh, Sean Keller. Thank you, President Crandall. Sorry, Jayla. Go break. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say uh, next week on Tuesday, we will be the second back to school night over at Robert Town. It obviously will be virtual and we welcome everyone to please join us. And the link, uh, I believe, was shared through the district, but I'll be sending it out to my families tomorrow. And also, I just wanted to request at some point if the board can have for a future uh, um, agenda item, uh, our decision on the butterfly bazaar and parade because I do have the committee contacting me and they would like to know what we plan to do with that. So if we just have that as a part of uh, an upcoming board um, agenda, I'd really appreciate. It. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, Barbara Martinez. Well, uh, sorry, Barbara, I unmuted you <laughs> and then I muted you back. All right, I'm here again. Okay. Hi, everybody. Barbara Martinez, principal of Pacific Grove Adult School. Can you hear me? Yeah. How's my Wi-Fi? A okay. little bit, a little bit uh, touchy, but we can see you and hear you. Okay. I, I just wanted to um, give a huge thank you. I haven't had a chance at a board meeting to do so yet, but we had a very wonderful donation to our child care program. Um, parent Debbie Beck uh, donated four large, colorful umbrellas, shade structures for our students because we're spending so much time outside. And well, not right now, but we were. And so the kiddos were having lunch outside and uh, we, I just wanted to say thank you for that generous donation. And then secondly, I just wanted to reiterate um, what John Walton said about our parent meeting and um, coming out for the community just to have a discussion on affordable housing um, in Pacific Grove. It is Wednesday, September 9th. I don't know if he said the date. So it's Wednesday, September 9th from 6 to 7.30 and we will get that information. Um, this is just like how we bring together families to, um, to engage with our school district to talk about LCAP. The city is bringing together families in our city to talk about affordable housing and how we can bring the families that work here back to the city to live here. That's all. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Buck Rogerman. Good evening, tr trustees and uh, members of the public. I just wanted to take an opportunity to um, thank all of our staff members as well as our parents that uh, made the materials distribution go very, very smoothly at Forest, Forest Grove. We had the drive-through going at the front front of school and uh, it was really impressive. Um, first of all, just to see the people who had to wait, be very, very patient. And then also to just um, have our staff members that uh, jumped in, pitched in, and uh, made sure that our students had what they needed in uh, order to learn. Also wanted to let everyone know that our back to school night is gonna follow Robert Downs. So ours is gonna be on Wednesday, August 26th. It's gonna be from six to seven. And we look forward to seeing everybody on a screen much like this one on Wednesday night. So just wanted to put that little plug in there. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, Sean Roach. Good evening, everyone. Sean Roach, proud principal of Pacific Grove Middle School. And I just wanted to let everybody know that the PGMS Back to School will be a recorded event on Thursday, August 27th. We wanted to make sure that as many families as possible could view and um, check out this important information at their leisure. They could watch it several times if they like. And um, we will be sending out that link very early next week. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sean. Okay, um, seeing no other staff, now uh, we will go to um, the public comment. I'm just gonna read my, um, where's my spiel here? Uh, this is in, individuals desiring to address the board. Any item of interest to the public will be heard. 
Comments may be limited to three minutes with total time of 20 minutes per agenda item. Public, public comment will also be allowed on each agenda item prior to board action. Uh, this is a meeting, a business meeting of the board conducted in public. And please note the Brown Act does limit board's ability to respond to public comment. And the board may choose to direct to administration for a future agenda. And so with that, uh, okay, now, Jayla, you're on. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jayla Setnick Ellis, and I am a 2017 graduate of Pacific Grove High School. Currently, I'm a student at the University of Sacramento, uh, majoring in criminal justice. As an alumni and resident of PG, I am committed to my community and serving people in need. As I'm sure everyone is aware of, PG is an extremely costly place to live and many families are currently feeling the effect of COVID. Yesterday, I sent a board mem all the board members an email receiving, like, sorry, board member email receiving about the Community Resource Center, which was recently begun at Monterey High and an article as well in the Coast Weekly about the project. This resource center plans to stock the room with a washer and dryer, school supplies, food, and clothes, which will be provided largely through donations and services, the need of that community. The local high schools, elementary schools throughout the peninsula have some sort of resource center, including Alisal and Marina High School. My proposal is a Pacific Grove resource center. I have recently received acceptance into a program agreeing to fund the launch of my resource center. The program is the SJSA Business Incubator. Um, it's an internship that aims at developing and supporting the next generation of entrepreneurs. I have become in contact with local businesses and business owners who have agreed to donate supplies such as produce and non-perishables. Um, I have a team that has a GoFundMe in progress, which will rely on donations to stock the center with necessities such as food, clothing, feminine products, and school supplies. I will also be in contact with local laundry mats to request gift cards to all children access to laundry services, and those who qualify for need will be able to obtain access to these facilities on weekends, after schools, and school holiday breaks. Um, one of my team members or myself will always be on call. However, I would request for volunteers to have a room staffed uh, about one to two people at all operational times. And I hope our community will work together to optimize the lives of our youth. What I'm asking from the district is space to be donated on school grounds for the resource center. And I would appreciate a request that the idea for a community center be placed on the agenda at the next board meeting. Okay. Well, um, as I said in our in my um, spiel there, that we are limited to how we can respond to public comment, but we're not um, totally um, denied that. So I just want to—I don't know if you were on in the beginning of the the meeting, but we did get your email. I responded to you on that. Everybody is aware of it. We are looking into it um, to put it on the agenda as well. So stay tuned for that, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up is Tom Moore. All right, good evening, Chair Crandall and trustees. Uh, I'm Dr. Tom Moore, president of the Monterey Peninsula Soccer League and also president of California Soccer Association North. As many of you know, since 2012, the Monterey Peninsula Soccer League has been running a adult amateur soccer program as part of a fundraising effort for both the boys and girls soccer teams and programs at uh, Pacific Grove High School. Uh, normally, I come to you uh, typically at your meeting in May to present you with the results of our fundraising efforts. Uh, and I have to confess that um, the pandemic has uh, thrown a little bit of uh, confusion into that. Um, one would think that if you're sequestered at home doing telework, you'd have plenty of time to take care of that little uh, detail. Um, however, she who must be obeyed had some different ideas. So uh, that's my excuse at any rate for the delay. 
I would like to present to you and tell you that I will put in the mail to the district tomorrow for delivery to Principal Garcia uh, for the uh, girls soccer team, this check in the amount of $8,370. Oh. And also for the boys soccer team, a second check in the same amount of $8,370. Uh, and I will point out that uh, since 2012, when we began this program, we've managed to raise a total of, and donate to these programs, a total of $94,548. Uh, we certainly hope, thank you very much, um, we certainly hope we will be able to continue this program, but of course, as we know, this is relying on an end uh, to this pandemic by whatever means immunization. So um, I urge you all to stay safe. Um, we would of course welcome any of you to sign up for our uh, over 30 program. Uh, I know one of your fellow trustees is usually out there taking the ball away from me in the games, but um, uh, he's he's got a little bit of size uh, advantage on me. So uh, at any rate, thank you very much for your attention and I will put these checks in the mail first thing in the morning. Thank you so much. Quite welcome. Very generous and thanks to your to your group as well. Next up is Mayor B Bill Peak. Good evening, President Crandall, trustees, district staff and public. Um, as uh, Ms. Crandall said, I'm Bill Peak, I'm Mayor Pacific Grove. And uh, as Dr. Porras uh, said, at the next city council meeting on September 2nd, our city manager is going to request approval for cannabis shops in Pacific Grove. And I'm, I'm here to elicit feedback from the community. And I know the school district and parents are definitely interested in, in the future of cannabis in Pacific Grove. I don't have details on this. Uh, unfortunately, our city manager has decided to keep the details of his recommendation until a week from today, I believe would be the 27th. But uh, you can, might focus on three things I would like to know, and I think it would be important for council, is how many cannabis shops do you want in Pacific Grove? And how close should they be to schools? And do you want them downtown? I think those are three very critical uh, questions for, for the community. And the best way to influence a cannabis decision is to email city council. Uh, obviously it's on the website, but it's the address is city council at cityofpacificgrove.org. Again, that's city council at cityofpacificgrove.org. And so I, I thank you for helping to spread the word September 2nd. And, and thank you very much for all your efforts to keep our kids learning in this most challenging times. Have a good, thank, have a good thank, meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, next up have is, you, yes. I'm sorry, Bill, if, if you're still there, Mayor Peak. Yeah, Bill's uh, fine. <laughs> question, uh, and it's directly related to this and what was announced earlier. Um, my recollection is this is a continuation of a discussion actually that occurred. We're not bringing it back. It was asked to be brought back at a future meeting back when it was discussed in November, a year ago almost. Is that correct? It was discussed in December and city council gave the city manager direction uh, that this was not the time to hear it. And so I'm, I'm surprised it's come back to us so quickly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, thank you, John. Okay, next up is Jay Kim. Hi, thank you so much for having me and thank you for your um, amazing work during the summer and this year. Um, I wanted to thank Dr. Porras and Superintendent Porras and Mayor Bell Peak for bringing up the cannabis um, dispensary um, issue with regard to the city council because I am one of the 
parents um, and our family is very concerned about cannabis um, dispensaries so close to the schools and daycare facilities. Um, and the fact that that is, it's a due process issue, there should be transparency, um, and that is coming about so quickly after being um, proposed right before Christmas. Right now, the timing is very suspicious to me um, because we are under such stress with the pandemic. So I just wanted to encourage people to actively participate with regard to this. And I'm going to be resending my letter that actually um, discussed the proximity of the cannabis dispensary proposal to the schools in downtown and um, the risks that are associated with it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing um, no more public comment, um, go back to the agenda. The consent agenda, I'm also going to give you my little spiel on that. Uh, the consent agenda are items considered to be routine and or may have been discussed at a previous board meeting. There are no discussions on these items unless a member of the board has specific questions or request an item to be removed. Um, approved items are considered in full and adopted as recommended. Um, the, be, when the meeting first started, before we went to closed session, there is a change to the agenda and um, our HR director, Billy Mankey, if I could ask you to just give us a brief um, explanation of the change. Sure, thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, on the certificated assignment order, um, I have a clerical error on that. I have that Melissa Anderson replaces Shannon McCarty. She actually replaced Kyleen Brousseau, who did a grade level change. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and um, as mentioned, we previously approved the change, um, but just wanted to make it um, also here. So um, board, any um, comments or questions um, or a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move we accept the consent agenda. I second, but I do have a comment, please. Oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, John. Well, I just, uh, consent I, if I'm correct, uh, we've already uh, disposed of, uh, of the uh, surplus furniture and Barbara and uh, Ms. Martinez and Mr. Kelly uh, did that last week right after school started, uh, of which I'm very appreciative. I realize that stuff in the boneyard has been there a long time, uh, but I think that's, that's already done. Is that correct? Or are you continuing on with that? I think that probably goes to Barbara. Yeah, I think I might have to unmute her. Well, not Kelly. Hey, everybody. Sure, we we have about half of it gone. Um, we put half of it out with the hopes that it would stay there, <laughs> but with the help of the community, they took it off our hands. So, um, with with the hope of the discussion tonight, we can go ahead and plan starting tomorrow um, a systematic way of dispersing the rest of the desks and furniture to our needy families in our community. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. John, did that you. answer your question? Uh, it's, it's more than sufficient. Uh, that's, that's old surplus stuff and I appreciate uh, the effort going in to put it in the right hands. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I do have a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended by Christy Dawson and seconded by John Path. Um, could I have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, that passes 5-0. We are now on to action item A. This is the approval of Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, um, with the California School Employees Association, which is our classified staff. This is a letter, um, this is, is um, basically um, formality. We do this all every year. This is um, specific to the um, COVID um, pandemic and how, how that looks for them differently than it has in the past. And this has been approved by both teams. Well, not approved because we're gonna approve it hopefully now, but it's been agreed upon by both sides, both teams. Um, 
and I'll just go quickly to the board if there's any additional questions. Um, uh, Christy? Not at this time, thank you. John Paff? No, thank you. Okay. Ryan? Nothing additional, thanks, Debbie. John Walton? Nothing. Okay, thank you. And I have no questions. Um, and so we'll open this up for public comment if there's any questions on the um, memorandum of understanding with CS. EA. Okay, we have Leslie. Um, go ahead. Hello, good evening, everybody. I'm Leslie Trunillo. I'm the CSCA president here in Pacific Grove Unified School District. Um, I just wanted to express a heartfelt thanks to our classified negotiations team, as well as our district negotiations team, and to the school board um, for this collaborative process that has honored and addressed the employee concerns and uh, making our health, safety, and peace of mind a priority. It was a, it was a, a big document to put together and um, we have a lot of varying job families in, in the classified unit. So it was a lot to put together. So I appreciate everybody's hard work. Yeah, thank you for your hard work as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, seeing no other public comment on this item, I'll bring it back to the board. And um, John, did you have something? No, I have to get rid of a cat. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's another meeting. Uh, okay, so I'll bring it back to the board for um, a motion, please. Make a motion to approve. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion to approve by John Paff, seconded by Christy Dawson. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Uh, before I vote aye, I just want to um, say Mr. Paff's cat's one of my favorite parts of these meetings. I don't want to get rid of it, but yeah. aye. Thank you. Okay, that passes 5-0. Thanks again to both, both teams on that. Great work. Um, okay, next item is action um, discussion B. This is resolution number 1055, reduction of classified school services. Um, so this item is um, regarding our the daycare, uh, the child care at the adult school. Um, this um, is a different budget than our general budget. And it's the reasoning for this is, is because of lack of work, because of COVID, obviously, Nobody's really going, so we have to reduce those services. Um, it's lack of work versus lack of budget, just to um, make that clear. Um, board, um, do you have any um, additional questions for Director Mankey on this, Christy? No, not at this time, thanks. Okay, John Path? No, thank you. Brian? All good, thanks. All right, John Walton? Uh, just one comment, because I know sometimes I get asked this by the public, and just to remind everyone, I know it's been stated, but it's actually two separate budgets we oversee as a board, the adult school and, and uh, the rest of the schools. And so um, sometimes that's confusing to people. You know, I also know it's it's always difficult to let staff go. We're never happy to do that, even if it's temporarily while we recover. Um, it's unfortunate, um, but it's, it's a sign of the times, unfortunately, that we're living in um, with these types of things. Yeah. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I saw the um, the signature on here is mine, so I'm not going to be very proud to be signing this. Um, and I and I and I also just I think this might be the first time in nine years that I've been on this board that this has happened. So um, I do want to mention also that um, the some of the employees will have seniority if uh, COVID magically goes away, and hopefully that happens soon. Um, and we we have that need, um, we'll be able to bring them back. So, um, with that said, I'll open this up to public comment. If there is any, you can raise your hand. Okay. Seeing no immediate questions, um, hands. And we'll bring it back to the board. Uh, in, um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve this resolution, number 1055, Reduction of Classified School Services. Seconded. Okay. Am I unmuted? Yes, <laughs> you are now. 
I yes. tried so hard to raise my hand and I was just, oh sorry I Barbara. Yeah, it's because this is this affects my school. I did oh, want to yeah. make a comment and, and and let everybody know it is not easy to make cuts when we have times of low enrollment. But we 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 were able to place some of our employees in other positions within the district to make up some of that time. And should enrollment increase, we'd like to bring these people back to work. So that is our ultimate goal to make sure that everybody stays working. But it's not uncommon in adult ed world that when numbers go low, we we reduce and then we bring it back as numbers come up. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so I have a motion to approve by myself, Debbie Crandall, and a second by Christy Dawson. And this is always a roll call, but since we're doing virtual, it's a roll call also. <laughs> so roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall. Aye. Trustee Dawson. Aye. Trustee Path. Aye. Trustee Swanson. Aye. Trustee Walton. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That passes 5-0. Um, action discussion item C. This is updates to board regulations 5121, grades evaluation of student achievement, and 5121.1, grades evaluation of student achievement at the high school. Um, I will go ahead and um, there's a lot involved here, so I will ask um, the principals to chime in here. Um, but my, if my understanding is correct, this is um, changing the time frame to um, cancel or drop out of your classes. Um, so uh, I'll ask um, uh, Principal Garcia to add to that or or change or uh, correct my understanding, please. Thank you, and your understanding is correct. We are asking for a temporary change to regulation 5121 and 5121.1 while we are in distance learning and specifically um, the section for withdrawal from class and a change of dates to match with our current schedule um, so that it aligns uh, for our first quarter and our second quarter. And again, this is just a request while we are in distance learning. We're not asking for a permanent change so when we're out of distance learning, we'll come back and, and ask to revert back to what we have in policy currently. Okay. Um, so what I, um, what I think I wanted to ask and just get confirmation is um, it's a six weeks normally, is that right? Um, what the policy says here and, and we're reducing it by 50%, is that right? Yes, approximately. We, the new dates that we put on there, we tried to uh, balance the percentage of time within the semester to the quarter. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, board, any other questions? Um, Christy? Yeah, I have, I have a few. Okay. Um, well, one of the things with the 5121 student obeys rules for the little, I just, feel the word obeys, it's got taken out of the marriage ceremony. I'd love to see follows rules. Um, I also had a, a couple of things that seemed a little, whenever, Principal Garcia, whenever it becomes evident to a teacher that a student is in danger of failing a course, it's the first paragraph, they'll arrange a conference. Um, I mean, a kid could technically be failing a course within the first couple of weeks if they haven't got an assignment in. And parents do have the opportunity, do they not, to follow along their student and see how the student is doing, correct? They do have access uh, to the Google Classroom as a, a, they have a guardian view is how it's, it's uh, described. I, I just find this sentence, I know it's ed code, but um, it seems, I just find this sentence a little troublesome. You understand what I mean? I mean, it, you could be calling for a conference in the, the second week of school because the kid hasn't turned anything in. So, but that, is that stated currently in our policy? Can you refer to, what section are you referring uh, to? I'm right at the 5121.1, right after the grades are listed, the first paragraph saying, as soon as it becomes evident, 
to a teacher that a student is failing. Which page on the packet, Christy? Was it page 71? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's written in three different chunks here. It's a little confusing. I'm looking at 75 right now. It's written okay. actually in both both 5121 and point 0.1. Yeah. Um, uh, Trustee Dawson, that you're correct. That is actually right verbatim out of Ed Code. So uh, we need to keep that. We're required to have it in there as it's stated in Ed Code because that's that's the compliance issue. Um, and uh, we we do this practice already anyway. You see it reflected a little bit in the DNF list when we generate those. Right. Those are typically when we get those, we immediately call the parents to notify them. Um, this is just basically seeing we are compelled to notify parents when we are aware of it. And so we, we can't really change the language that's written because we, we need to have it in directly as is Ed Code for compliance issues. But the DNF lists are a, a ways into the, yes. the quarter. Okay, that but works it can, for me. It can happen sooner than that as well. Sure. If the teacher notices it, but the compulsory part comes in when we notice the DNFs. And that's something we also see now. And uh, when the LCAP is being uh, usually in normal years, the LCAP is in place. We talk a little bit about how we're tracking some of those students as well. Okay. I, another paragraph that doesn't seem to be ed code is about four down from the teachers are encouraged to allow for trends in the quality of student work. If he ends up with a high quality work that requires skills acquired through the grading period, low grades at the beginning of the grading period need not diminish the appropriate evaluation. And then it says high grades at the beginning need not compensate for a downward trend. I found that a little confusing. I mean, a grade in, in uh, the second week should be equivalent to a grade four weeks later, where this to me sounds like you're, if the trend is up or similarly down. I, I, I don't even know why that's in there. I find that very confusing. Yeah, I can't speak to, to why it's in there. I do know that Ed Code um, gives full discretion to the teacher on grading. I think this is um, yeah. more, more of uh, advice, if you will. Um, I can, I can also offer the language is a little tricky. Um, it's just I, basically, I so. it's basically I mean, uh, if you look up at the top of the, of the item, this is kind of, you'll see this kind of language oftentimes in what's called a mandated regulation. Um, and it'll be printed up on the top, right underneath the title of the regulation. You'll see it says mandated regulation. We're pulling those, those, that language pretty much right off of uh, CSBA templates, which are legally vetted. So again, it follows language. Um, most of the time you're going to see that on those kinds of regs. Now we could probably add something that helps say in other words, but the, the, the point of that language is to make in, and the other, other school districts will have that exact same language sitting in their regulations as well. Um, but it's basically saying that you got to allow for up and down trends and grades, and there's no guarantee that a high grade is going to cover a low grade and that a low grade can't be compensated by getting a higher grade later. It's just Certainly, a complicated way of saying that. It is complicated. And if I have to read it four or five times as an educator, and still at the end, I don't know what the heck they're saying. I mean, I go back to Mr. Garcia, that it's the teacher's discretion. And, um, but this to me, I don't know. I find it confusing and I respect the heck out of CSBA, but I don't know that it adds anything to it. Well, I tell you what we can do if you like. Um, uh, we do need to have this passed for this evening because we need to, to pursue this, this what, what we're looking for. However, it's temporary. So we are going to bring this back um, in, in when it's time to bring it back. In the interim, I will pass this by legal counsel and, and see if there's any way that we can do some adjustments to language to make it a little more user friendly. I would like that. I okay. think, I mean, we all agree what it's supposed to say. I just think it could be tweaked a little. Sure. Um, another piece that I found in some pages, uh, attendance wise, kids had 72, 72 hours, another place they have five full days. If a teacher is indeed trying to grade students, uh, we have phone systems. So um, the, the absences can be excused on a phone system immediately. Is that correct? At all sites? Yes, we do have uh, our attendance clerks monitor um, phones and messages. Okay, so my question would be, there's discrepancies in the times. I think it should be district-wide. And I think 48 hours is a ton of time for a parent to call. I mean, they can call at 3 in the morning and leave a message. So it can be at any time. And I just like it to be uniform across the district. 
in 48 hours. So if a teacher is indeed trying to, especially with the short quarter, to have to wait five full days to even know whether, you know, to honor an assignment or not, I think uh, a, a shorter timeline should be observed and I think it should always be observed. Is that doable, do you guys think? 48 hours versus 72 or up to five days? Christy, where are you referring to? Uh, one of the pages, 48 hours. Um, I know on page seven, it says five days on page 70. Uh, you look there, I have it. Uh, second paragraph from the bottom, they give them up to five days. And on uh, page 74, I believe, it says, uh, 74 says 72 hours. So you've got two different listings there of how much time parents have. Uh, Christy, may, can I make a suggestion that um, that we can send um, Dr. Porras and uh, Mr. Garcia these changes that you're wanting? And of course, we have to discuss it again, um, as Dr. Porras mentioned. Would that be acceptable? Yeah, but we, we need to pass it tonight, right, Dr. Porras? Yes, I think the, 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 the critical parts are the... Um, Yes, we do need to pass it tonight. We well, need we to need to pass it tonight, it tonight but um, this has been existing for some time, and I don't think um, another two months is going to hurt, but what, what we do need to do is allow them to change the policy for the uh, dropping of the classes time frame. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm looking at is having this discussion at a later date. And we can certainly, we didn't know that these were um, uh, concerns um, before this evening. So we can certainly um, take your, your concerns on the other parts of the policy on the regs and um, make some, make sure that they all align correctly. Clearly there's an alignment issue um, that we can make some adjustments and make sure that it's all aligned correctly and then bring it back for further discussion. Um, I don't think those two pieces are going to impact uh, the revisions that we are needing for the, um, the COVID pandemic at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, John Paff, any other questions? Well, I, I would, uh, I mean, Christy brings up an interesting point on um, the encouragement of trends, which uh, I read that if you uh, have to understand addition to get to multiplication, even though you failed the addition test, you may take it into account when you do the multiplication later. Uh, I don't find that problematic, but I do think tonight uh, when we make a motion on this, uh, Ralph or Dr. Porras or um, Mr. Garcia, pick a number, five days or 72 hours, but they should be the same in both. We should do that tonight. The hours for? Just recording well, an absence. You yeah, just recording an absence. Sure. We just, there's oh, no reason not okay. to make those the same. Whatever they are, they are. Well, I think there are other policies that may be connected with this. And what we don't want to do is pick a number that's not aligned with the other policies. And then now oh. we're in alignment someplace else. Right now, one of them isn't aligned for sure. So you got a 50-50 shot. No, no, I mean other, other policies besides these in terms of late assignments. There are other policies that reflect uh, late dates, absence dates, those kinds of things. Um, this is in the purpose of grading, but there are other policies that are in regards to um, attendance. And I, if we approve something that's not aligned with the other ones, then we're gonna find the same problem elsewhere. Um, if you can give us some time, again, we just didn't know, so we didn't have a chance to look to the other policies. So if you can give us some time, we can look for those other changes and make it appropriate. I, I just would recommend this is not critical to tonight's um, request and, and we will certainly, I've already made a request to have um, Ms. Ackerman send this to legal counsel to make sure we're all in alignment. Um, however, I think we'd like to get these other first two just changed and we'll, we'll clean up the other errors later, but we don't, I can't assure quality to the other policies at a moment's notice. You, you understand why I say at least one of them is wrong no matter what. So yeah. you got a you got a fifty fifty shot, Chief. I understand, but there are other board policies besides these. That <laughs> okay, I won't go around. Go ahead. All right, Brian. Any um, anything additional? No. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we can come back to it, and we it's been like this for a while. We need to get it done so we can have like what uh, Dr. Forrest was saying. We'll get it tweaked out. Uh, once legal can do what they need to do, but let's move it along. Okay. John Walton? Nothing for me. Okay. 
Um, I will go ahead and open this up for public comment. And go ahead and raise your hand if you have any um, comments on this item. Seeing none right away, bring it back to the board. Um, uh, I, do I have a motion to approve this? Also move. Okay, I'll second. Um, I have approval uh, or motion to approve by Brian Swanson, seconded by Debbie Crandall. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? I vote aye with the considerations that you've said, Ralph. Nope. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That passes 5 0. Next item is um, action discussion D. Um, this is um, the Monterey County Office of Education Wide Area Network Memorandum of Understanding Consortium Contract Services Addendum. Um, this is um, basically uh, increasing our, um, I call it bandwidth, um, it's probably not the right technical word, um, from um, where we're at now to basically doubling it um, to allow um, additional um, strength for videos and the um, streaming and stuff that we're doing now for the um, distance learning. Um, it, our agreement has always been with the MCOE. Um, this is just increasing our strength. Um, Mr. Mejia, is there anything else that you'd like to add or? No, nope, that, that is essentially right? it. Okay, great. Um, board, any questions? Um, Christy? No, not at this time. Okay, um, John Path. Well, I, I don't really, uh, this cost seems pretty high actually. Um, given that right now one gig transmission to homes is uh, $30. But I, I don't know if that's, if that's common or not common. Or, and actually, Mr. Walton, if you actually have some information, or Mr. Mejia or um, um, Matt, um, you know, is this changing as we go forward? Um, I, I open it up to have someone answer, but no, I have no other question. So I will say that there are other ISPs uh, that we can look to. Um, in fact, MCOE has uh, stated that this is probably the last time that they're going to form this uh, consortium and that every school district uh, after this will probably have to look for their own ISP. Um, but that will be in 2022, 2023. Fair enough, thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Brian, any other questions? Yeah, I had a, uh, yeah, a couple things. Um, and I think, again, it's just more to how it was written. Under background, it says in line two on page 78, under background, it says this new agreement is to replace the expiring services and will be in effect until for 2019 to 2023. That, the, the, that sounds, am I the only one that that sounds weird yeah. to? I think it's just a typo probably. So is it un to be yeah. in until 2023? Correct. Okay, all right, thank you for that. And then secondly, under the fiscal impact, it says the cost, it's one gigabyte per second for 2250 a month, the annual payment of 27,000. But we're going to two gigabytes per second, right? Yeah, sorry, that was another typo. It should say two gigabytes per second for two, 2250 per month and our annual payment for the two gigs will be the 27,000 mm. a year. Awesome. Thank you. I'm mm. good. Thanks for catching that, Brian. So, just to confirm that I understood that correct also. The the 1 gigabyte is um the typo. Yes. The dollars are not. Dollars are not. Okay. Great. Um Brian, did you have any other questions? No, no, thank okay. you for okay. answering those. I appreciate it. John Walton? Well, Brian stole all my math and date and the thunder. <laughs> I don't have much to say other than, um, you know, it is high, comparatively speaking, um, if you were just looking at ISP services, but usually in a consortium deal like this, 
It comes with other services like managing the contract and firewall. So what you're paying for is more than just a typical ISP straight service. Um, you know, and, and it sounds like the, the, the bigger district consortium is going away from it. So hopefully we'll see it drop in the future. I think that's my, my only other comment about this is I know we continue to fund what I consider annual ongoing costs out of the tech bond. And I think at some point we're going to have to bite the bullet and start baking some of this stuff into our operating budget. It's not one time costs like a project. Uh, ISP costs are never going to go away. So the sooner we, we build that cost, whatever it is, into our annual operating budget, the happier I'll be. But with that said, I'm in favor of it. Okay. That's a good point that you make as well. Thank you. Um, okay. We're going to uh, open this up for public comment. Um, go ahead and raise your hand if you have any comments, questions about this item. I'm seeing none right away. I'll bring it back to the board for a motion, please. Make a motion to accept. Um, I can't read it in the dark here. Monterey MCOE Wide Area Network Memorandum of Understanding of Consortium Contract Services. Addendum. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it does say addendum. It is an okay. addendum. Right. All second. All I'll second. All right. Um, sorry, Brian. <laughs> okay. That's okay. I'm, uh, I'm, slightly um, hurt. I'm moving this along. Uh, I have a, a motion to approve by John Path, seconded by Debbie Crandall. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That passes 5-0. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mejia. And looks like you have the, the next one as well. This is an action discussion E. Microsoft um, CAMSA license with soft choice. I will not attempt to explain this. So if I could ask you to give us a brief um, explanation of this contract, please. So this is a contract that we, um, the district has has um, tied into in the past. This is for all of our Microsoft licenses, our Windows operating system licenses, our server licenses. Um, so Microsoft typically uh, gives this registration to one company and that company therefore is able to at, um, give out this bundle at uh, discounted rates um, for school districts. So this is the lowest uh, pricing that we can get on this. We can go to other vendors, but they cannot give us these um, price reductions on there. So even though it's uh, still a little steep for a yearly uh, licensing fee, uh, it is something that enables the district to not only have use of Microsoft Office products or Office uh, software, but it's also for our server licenses and to be able to upgrade any of our uh, staff devices or Windows based devices to the newest operating system uh, for, for this year. And it does cover the entire district. It's not limited to a certain number of, of licenses. That was going to be my question. Um, so mm -hmm. this, this covers all of the Chromebooks and all that too? So with Chromebooks, uh, yes, we do. Although there are student devices, we do have uh, the ability to offer Office 365 to every student uh, should that be needed. But we've okay. been, as a Chrome OS district, we are we have been and still continue to uh, support the use of Google Docs and the Google Suite. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Um, board, any other questions? Um, Christy? No, that was good. Thank you. John Path. I have not been able to reconcile the 17644 annual fee to an estimated lease of 545 per month. And if we can get a lease at 545 per month, um, I would certainly accept a $6,000 a year payment instead of a $17,000 a year payment. Say what now? Where's the 545? Yeah, go further, please. Page uh, 81. Page 81, got it. I see 17644. Unless that's 17644 and that's, a, that's not annual, that's for three years. No, um, this is the the yearly price 
um, for for the our annual payment, the 17. That's gonna be the monthly. So I still see don't see the 545. Very bottom estimated, bottom right, page 81, estimated monthly lease payment 545 per month. Oh, well, the big word for me there is estimated. So, I mean. I get what John's saying though. It's just like, it's like, well, that just further explanation is how could, cause 545 times 12 is 6,540. So. so that's the lease um, payment amount, but there's some other charges in here. Is that correct, Mr. Mejia? Yes. So from from what I gather from the company, and I've been in, in meetings with them, is that um, the the seventeen six forty four um, is our yearly or our annual payment for the next three years, um, and this is the amount of of this is a, a bundle. It's not just for um, one license or for uh, one service you'll see on that on that document we have um, Microsoft enrollment for education we have um, we have on there our server licenses as well we have on their um, virtual desktop access and and the thing about this contract is um, and when I went to this company to see there's a lot of things on here that we also don't really use as a district I see I uh, worked with them to see if we can get that stuff off uh, the quote things that we don't need but that would be, um, they're more than happy to do that, but it would affect the overall cost, driving up the cost. They kind of bundle this all together that you have to buy this package uh, as is, um, or, or it drives up the cost. Okay. Um, that's good for me. John Paff, did you, you still want well, to? It, it doesn't answer the question that you have two different numbers and one of them is significantly different than the other. Um, Okay. I'm trying to read Except it. that it's seventeen thousand six hundred forty-four dollars and forty-six cents a year for two thousand uh, potential copies. Um, if we get stuff like this back, could we get a translation layer? So I'm not reading MS enrollment for education and a whole bunch of acronyms that um, are, are not very fruitful for me in the grand scheme of software. Thank I definitely you. request that from the vendor. Well, I, I will point out just because. Um, John, there's a little asterisk there by the end of that um, statement, the 545 statement. The second page does have the asterisk explanation and I'm not gonna read it all, but um, did, did you happen to read that? I did, it says that we could pay $545 for 36 months. Great, <laughs> you know. All right, well, all right, we'll move on. <laughs> um, where am I at? Brian, you have any questions? Um, yeah, um, how long have we, any idea how long we've actually been uh, obtaining these licenses through soft choice? It may say in here, but so may know already. And so. so through soft choice, um, I believe this is, this will be the second time that we enter into agreement with soft choice. Previously to this uh, company called SHI Technologies, uh, believe it or not, had the registration uh, from Microsoft to, to be a vendor of this bundle for school districts. But Microsoft has, um, for maybe the last two years or three years, uh, moved that registration over to Soft Choice. So if we want to um, have it at this price, we, can, we would have to go through Soft Choice. Okay. We're more, we're free to go to other vendors, um, but not to get the bundled pricing. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, and is this? I guess because I don't quite understand it, um, and and I I is this pressing that it has to move through tonight, or do we have an opportunity to try? I mean, I don't feel like a like a trusty path is fully understanding it either. They've, I think I, for one, at least, am a little lost on this item. 
Is it pressing that it goes through tonight? Well, um, we have about 50 days left on our, uh, as a grace period in between renewals, mm -hmm. um, from what I've been told from the company. Um, so as long as it gets taken care of in 50 days, I think that we uh, would be okay in that part if we needed to get more of a breakdown from the company of what this is and how it's structured and why it's structured that way. Um, we have about 50 days to do so. September 3rd, um, long enough for you? Sure. For me? Yeah, for you. To, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, can get, I can get it in contact with them tomorrow. Okay. Um, would that work, Brian and John, for bringing it back on the 3rd? It would for me. I just, I, I, and I'm sorry, I should have spent more time with it the first time. And uh, when I got this and I didn't. So um, I would like to look at it and ask a few more questions um, before I vote on something that I don't feel I fully understand. Okay. All right. Um, John Walton? Um, I don't have any comments. Okay. Um, um, unless there's objection from the board, um, we'll go ahead and ask for this to be brought back with additional information that was discussed tonight on September 3rd. You have a hand up? Yeah, I, I'm going to go there. I just wanted to make sure there was no objection from the board. No objection. Okay, hearing none. Um, Matt Kelly? This is public comment time, by the way. It, it, can you hear me? Yes. It sounds to me, looking at this quote, um, that didn't come across, where the, the miscommunication is, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan, is the $17,000 is for three years, and at a lease payment of 36 months at $545, you'd be paying $19,000 at the end of the three years. So you'd be paying more. Is that, is that correct, Jonathan? Is it the 17,000 is for three years? My, my understanding, um, the com conversations with Soft Choice is that the seventeen thousand is a yearly payment for the next three years. So over the course of the next three years, we would have to pay the seventeen every year. Um, that is the the explanation and the structuring that they gave to me. So I would uh, prefer to verify that. Although I don't feel that I've misunderstood them, uh, but I could verify that for the board um, if that that is indeed the case. That sounds like a, a, a good first step. And if you, if, if you can ask that question and then uh, depending upon the answer, um, uh, more questions will or won't follow. Okay. President Crandall, um, yes. when this came out, um, uh, when Director Kelly mentioned about the lease payment, we just said we do not want lease payment because you know why would we pay interest but um, I think obviously the question we need clarification on is one year or is it a three year cost? Mm -hmm. I think so too, at least for, for us to understand. Okay, well then um, as long as uh, Mr. Mejia, you think um, September 3rd meeting, um, which would really be the agenda is gonna be, I think released next Friday, right? Yes. Yeah. So as long as that's enough time for you. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. So we're going to table that item. The next item is um, action discussion F. Am I on track here? Yeah. Uh, agreement regarding the check to virtual card or ACH, ACH for vendor payments. Um, this item is, um, I think, um, a new and faster and maybe um, cost-saving way to pay vendors for their services, basically through electronic transfer. Uh, Song, is that correct? That's correct. Um, thank you. Um, board, any other questions um, on this item? Uh, Christy? No, not at this time. Okay. John Path? No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Brian? All good. Thank you. All right. Uh, John Walton. No questions. Okay, great. Um, we will um, go ahead and open this up for public comment if there is any public comment on this virtual card item. 
Okay, I'm seeing no um, questions. Bring it back to the board for a motion, please. I move that we accept the agreement regarding check to virtual card or ACH for vendor payments. Second. Okay, uh, approval uh, for motion to approve for by Christy Dawson and seconded by John Paff. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Okay, thank you. That passes 5-0. Um, next item is um, action item, action discussion H. Um, board calendar meetings. Um, Dr. Porras, is there any changes to, to the calendar? Um, I think, did we miss item G? G. Yeah, you skipped G. Did G. I? The facilities. Use facilities. Uh-huh. Hold okay. on. Ay -ay -ay. Hold on. My, my agenda items are mixed together here, obviously. Oh, I don't want to take Director Kelly's right. moment of glory. Oh, uh, thank you for, I thought I looked too, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm on track. No, I'm not. I almost made it. <laughs> Mistake. Okay. Now we're actually on action discussion G. Uh, facilities use uh, joint use agreement with City of Pacific Grove. Um, so this is an agreement. Um, uh, uh, Director Kelly brought this to us a couple meetings ago, I think. I lost track right. now, probably more like 10. What? Yes. Yeah, more like 10 right. meetings probably. Um, and was just information where um, we have always had kind of an agreement with the city to use uh, facilities back and forth, but this is actually just um, now official and agreement um, that I believe will be one year. Yes. Um, uh, Director Kelly, is there anything additional you want to add? Okay. Um, no, uh, actually just one thing where we did um, from the comments at the February 13th, we did add in um, the fees for, um, I believe it was the middle school for if they, if, if they use the equipment that we have um, some sort of way to, to charge them for using that equipment or for bringing in a sub to, to run the equipment. And city council has already approved this agreement. So um, by approving it tonight, we would, uh, it, it would, it would be, um, we'd be in use then, or we'd be going forward with it. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, any other questions, board? Um, Christy? No, looks good. Okay, John Path? So not in here is uh, fundraising efforts on behalf of the district um, as um, activities therein. And that's, you know, I don't know if that's purposeful or, um, uh, and I'm, if it's not, if it's deliberately not in there, which side decided they shouldn't do it. Um, and I, I don't know even how you'd address it since, uh, since they actually have different obligations. So maybe it's not something to add. Matt, uh, you know, Director Kelly, did you, did you actually talk about that? Things like uh, uh, Walk with Pride or the use of Chautauqua Hall for uh, uh, the shoe dance? Yeah, we did. And um, Walk with Pride doesn't fall under PGUSD, nor does the shoe dance, which yeah. is why this is a direct contract with PGUSD and those are different entities. Okay. And, and like the PTA is a different entity too, essentially. Correct. Correct, yes. This is strictly with PGUSD, which includes our sports programs as well. Our, our uh, yeah, all our sports programs, sorry. Did that answer your question, John? It, it does, it's, it says that we deliberately did not include them, we didn't make any attempt and it's not clear to me how one would do it. So, it, you know, it's perfect because if I don't have a solution, I can't think of anything better. Also, Matt, I really appreciate you working with the city and whomever else in the district may have done so to uh, clean up the agreements and actually formalize them. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Brent. John. Brian, do you have any questions? Um, a couple things here um, as I'm just looking this over. On page 89, there's talk uh, item number nine about a master schedule. So um, 
is there any concern? Because we use Facilitron for a lot of this stuff too, for the district stuff, don't we, Matt? The, that's exactly what we use, yeah. Will they, is that what you intend to use to like in, invite them into that? Does the city use that too? Or are we gonna have like a, a shared system and then still be using Facilitron? Like a... No, they, we, we're still, they're already using Facilitron. Um, everything's already in there for them. They have their account, they have their insurance in there. So it makes it, and they already have their fee structure in there. So it makes it easy. Okay. And, and this document that we're looking at right now is the actual, I scroll down to the end, it's the actual place where signatures are going to be placed and this is the way it's going to read. That's correct. Yes. So on that same page, and a, a, maybe I'm just reading it wrong, but number nine, item C, where it says scheduling use of city property. And then it goes on to say PGUSD shall have sole responsibility for scheduling the use of PGUSD property. Am I reading that right? Um. Or is there a typo in there somewhere? I, I think what I, from what I read, <laughs> this is a while ago, from what I remember or from what I recall is the intent of that was to say that PGUSD has priority over the city on PGUSD's property. When and they're I think not they, using they're, it. Well, yes, and I think that it says vice versa because it says in B, the city shall have sole responsibility for scheduling use of city property when the city and PGUSD are not using the property. Yeah. So basically it says that if neither one of us are using it, we can schedule it, I guess, to, to someone else. And that we have prior, and then each property owner has priority over everyone else or over the other, over the other party. Okay. I still, I'm still confused about that because I, I, I thought C, the bold part of that, the title of C then could read differently. Shouldn't the shouldn't C then read scheduling use of PGUSD property? PGUSD shall yes. have the full responsibility for scheduling the use of PGUSD property when the city and PGUSD are not using the property. The 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 right. titles of B and C are identical, is what I'm. Yeah. Saying. I think there's. I might a, have, sorry, go ahead, Debbie. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. I think the last, uh, the third PGUSD is maybe uh, extra. That it just says property when the city is not using the property. I don't know. Um, I can, you know, I can, I can take it back to Kyle and, and clarify it again. I just, uh, wanna, yeah, I just want to make sure that it's that part confused me. If it makes sense okay. to, to four out of five board members on this one, and you, Matt, and. and <laughs> I'm fine going, I just, you know what, it's been a long week, um, so maybe I just am not, it's just okay. not getting through my thick head, too. It, well, it is kind of worded a little bit. And, and again, different. Just, to, just to clarify, we're talking about B and C, right? Correct. Yeah, that we, this kind of, this language sort of has been hovering around for several years. Um, it is a little awkward. Uh, what, what Director Kelly is saying is absolutely right. They wanted to make sure that um, the, the, well, I'm back up. Yes, the, one of those cities should read PGUSD property. So I think the city has been repeated twice. And so I think the issue is that it's just, they want to make sure that each independently said when their things aren't scheduled, PG can't schedule city property for something when it's open for scheduling and the city can't open. So I think what happened was, um, the, um, C should read scheduling the use of PGUSD property. That's, yes, that's exactly the point I was trying to make was it's like, I get what it's saying yeah. beneath the bold, but the, the title of those, of C, is incorrect. Right. You see, are you seeing that, Director Kelly? I'm, yeah, I am seeing that now, yes. Okay, that should read PGUSD property. Oh. If, if, if the sentences are following suit, that's what that should read. Yes. Got it. So, okay. Brian, are you okay if that, 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 uh, Part is just um, part of the, the motion to approve this. Yeah, if we just correct that? that, I'm fine. And then I, it's, oh. and I feel better now. Just <laughs> <laughs> I see it now too. I didn't see it before. Yeah. So, okay. um, 
okay so this is my this might be where it gets a little sticky but probably not that sticky is that the the change will then have to be sent back mm -hmm. to the city and i think it'll have to be approved by city council again in order for it to be a contract which i don't think is that mm -hmm. big a deal um but we can um we can make that change. I'll t i can talk to kyle tomorrow and, and let yeah. him know oftentimes <laughs> oftentimes errors like this can go ahead and be corrected without the full because that's okay. a, it's not a really a, a substantive a substantive change so they probably will not need to uh, Mr. Okay. Lurie, sure will, will advise them, but I, I believe we'll be all right with that. Okay. Yeah, that's, we'll that's fine. In. That's not a big deal. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to uh, John Walton in a second, but uh, we do have Mayor Peak um, waiting in the queue, so I'll um, ask him to speak in just a second. Um, John Walton, do you have any additional questions? Uh, no questions, just a comment. It's, it's good to see the agreement in place. I know we're good partners with the city, but it, it's always good to have things in writing. Um, you know, to fall back on if we need to. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we'll open this up for public comment. Uh, Mayor Peak, it looks like you're already unmuted. You go ahead. Thank you again, um, President Crandall and trustees. And uh, I'll echo the comments that Trustee Walton just made. And uh, it's uh, good to have things on paper. So not only is there a better depth of understanding, but also it's a more transparent process. So, and um, clearly from your discussion, we need an English major on our city council <laughs> to uh, clear, things, clear things up. So um, a thank you certainly to the district staff for all your efforts to work on this and I'm sure it'll be refined. Um, and I, I'll make, I'll just address uh, a, some, a point made earlier by Trustee Path is for uh, exclusive use of city facilities by nonprofits like uh, uh, PG Pride, that's a special event. And City Council has already agreed um, that uh, there's no cost for PG Pride for using it for that purpose. And for um, for a nonprofit uh, to use a city facility, well, we have a fee structure in all 65 glorious pages with discounts for nonprofits. So that's how we handle it. But I thank you again for approving this and working, working with the city. It's much appreciated. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Okay, so to summarize here, we can approve this um, with that correction on page 89. Um, and Matt Kelly, you're going to check with the city to see if it needs to go back to them or not. But either way, uh, we can still approve it tonight. Okay, great. Okay making sure that I understand that correctly. So with that said, I will make a motion to approve the facilities use joint use agreement with City of Pacific Grove with the changes on page 89 as discussed. I'll second. I think I heard John Path first. Um, this is a motion to approve by David Crandall, seconded by John Path. Roll call, please. Trustee Crandall. Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Path? Aye. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, passes 5-0. And now we're on board calendar. Action discussion H. Are there any changes, Dr. Porras? Uh, yes, Madam President. We do have one. Uh, we're requesting to add a meeting. Uh, Please don't, are. Shudder. Please don't shudder as I say that. We are asking to add um, a special session, one item session, um, so that we can approve uh, the learning continuity plan that is required. If you recall, we are not required to have an LCAP. However, we are required to have this learning continuity plan approved within a certain deadline. In order to expedite this um, process, we're going to need to add another meeting uh, for the approval part. So. Uh, the uh, 17th will be the meeting where you'll be presented with a public hearing opportunity. Um, and then we're asking for the board to please add a special session for September the 24th, specifically for the approval and adoption of this continuity plan. Okay. 
So the 24th is a, is that a Wednesday, Tuesday? Thursday, is it? September 24th. <laughs> well, because we have a, a meeting on September 26th as well. Is that our Saturday? Oh, that's why I was like, that's why my, my calendar, my head is off. Okay. okay. Um, and okay, board, um, any feedback on that, adding that meeting? I think it's something that we, we have to have. We have to approve it. So, if, if Ralph, if we're meeting the 20, is it the 26th, the Saturday? Is that where we are? Mm -hmm. uh, can it be handled that day? I think that's point, open to the public. I think the 26th is a, um, was an optional. Uh, meeting. Um, give me a second. I just I flipped my page and then I lost it. Um, I think um, the seventeenth is preferable because of the timing. Um, I think we need to if, if we need that we need that Friday to get the document over to the county in time. So we wouldn't have enough time otherwise. So uh, you said the seventeenth. What you mean is you want to stick with the twenty fourth and not wait till the twenty sixth with I'm the sorry, other. Yes, correct. I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Okay, so the twenty fourth. Okay, just to make sure you've got the time. All righty. And just um, to add to that, the September twenty sixth. What Dr. Forrest was saying, I think we had scheduled this to have our board retreat, um, but I don't know that we'll be doing that. Right, so we may not have that 26 meeting. Yeah, I just don't want to rely on it in the event that we don't. And I know it's planned and all, but um, I think right. it's critical that we make well, sure. For time considerations, I think we should move ahead with the 24th, just so you've got that, that little zone, comfort zone. Yes. Okay. Um, John Paff, any other feedback? No, I, well, yeah, a little. Um, the, uh, any member of the public who's not aware, there was a change in the LCAP. And the, uh, the reason to call a special meeting in, on the 24th is there's another document that was given a timeline of roughly six weeks. And if you trace back, you have, uh, you have something like uh, three weeks of guaranteed, we have to discuss it time. So really there's no, we couldn't pull anything forward on it. Um, Ani could talk to it, but uh, I think it's important to get out there. We, we need it because of uh, change in law. She'll be talking about that on the 17th. Yes, you will. Um, okay, um, Brian, anything additional? No. Nope. Nope. Okay, you're good with the 24th? I'm good with the 24th. Okay, Thank John, John Walton? Uh, I'm good with the 24th. I guess I'd also like to just submit for consideration that we go ahead and cancel the meeting on the 26th for two reasons. One, um, we're still in the pandemic. I don't know that we can really realistically talk about board goals and a strategic plan when we're in crisis mode. I think yeah. um, you know, this is an unusual year and it would be a little, a little foolish to try to pretend like, you know, we we're still looking at the old one as if nothing had changed. And second, given that we have an election coming up and the board might change, um, it seems more reasonable to probably have that meeting after the election and the new board members sworn in so that they could be part of that conversation. Good idea. I really, I like that idea. Thank you for that. I agree with that. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Uh, we're going to bring this to public comment. If there's any public comment regarding the calendar change. Seeing, seeing none right away. Uh, bring it back to the board. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to approve the calendar with an additional regular meeting on September 24th, time to be announced, probably our normal time. We, we can begin at either six or seven, whichever you prefer. I don't, we don't anticipate a closed okay. session, so. Okay. Um, and the, the um, scheduled um, special board meeting is um, to be removed at this time. And May we I scheduled. Talk to that, What's that? May I talk to that? Sure. I, I strongly disagree. Uh, as in, um, now more than ever, we need to be trying to set the goal. And whether or not it changes in December after an election, um, it is more important to have that meeting sooner rather than later to determine where we need to be looking and what we need to be thinking. The 26th is, is even more critical this year than it was last year. OK. Um, well, um, I mean, you can, you can um, vote no to that. Um, 
Easy Unless enough. I'll go, I'll go back to the board to see if there's any additional comments on that. Um, Christy, how do you feel about the 26? Well, I feel like we've meeting? had, yeah, I feel like we've had a ton of meetings, and if I, there's a need, we could always add it. But I, I tend to agree with uh, Mr. Walton right now that I think there's going to be a transition up, a very coming up very quickly. And I, I think looking at uh, direction, it would be good to do with uh, the board members that are added in the next couple of months, several months, I should say. So yeah. I would tend to go with the initial thing okay. to get rid of the 26th. Um, Brian, feelings on that? Uh, a couple thoughts. One, I think we should vote on these two items. Well, can we separate them? Um, secondly, I'm in favor of doing the the uh, of uh, moving the 26 later because we know there will be some changes in in the board, and I think it would be great to have whoever the board is all loaded into that meeting when we when we do have it. Okay, um, we can vote on it separate, but I think we need to add an uh, agenda items that. Correct, Dr. Porras. Uh, well, uh, right now um, you, you can go ahead and take you can you can take two actions if you want. Um, that's not a problem because this is already agendized as a um, uh, an action item already. So you can either okay. bundle them or do them separately if you like. Okay. Well, if we bundle it and just have it as it is, the, it, it seems that the vote is going to be four one anyway, so it would pass. So I don't understand why we need to separate it out. That's I, that's true. That's fine. All right, I'm fine with that too. That's fine. Okay. Nobody else, um, nobody else objects. I, I mean, I know how I'm voting, so it's fine. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go back to my motion to approve the um, board calendar meetings um, with adding the September 24th regular board meeting at um, time to be determined and removing the um, actually moving the September 26th special board meeting until after December um, with the new board comes on. I'll second. Okay. Uh, I have a approval um, by Debbie Crandall, seconded by Brian Swanson. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Crandall? Aye. Trustee Dawson? Aye. Trustee Paff? No, it's a public meeting. They, they have input there at that as well. No. Trustee Swanson? Aye. Trustee Walton? Aye. Thank you. That passes four to one. Okay. Well, we made it through the action items pretty, pretty good in time there. So now we're on to information discussion. Um, our most popular item, COVID-19. Um, Dr. Porras, I think you're just gonna give us um, kind of a summary of where we're at. Um, yes, ma yes, Madam President, thank you. And I, I'll, I'll keep this brief. Um, uh, I think um, there are not a lot of changes at this point. We have a lot of other information items, but um, we have a, we, I, number one and, and first and foremost, and I, I, I want this to be um, very clear first, a thousand and one thank yous to our staff our teachers, our administrators, our classified folks for just a remarkable job, continuing to show great poise under a lot of pressure. Um, and uh, I don't think it, um, it doesn't go unseen that we are doing what's almost an impossible task, really, based on what's happening around us politically, um, as well as just in terms of what's happening with the virus and everything else. And I just applaud our staff. Our teachers are doing just, just everyone's doing just a phenomenal job. So I don't want that to go without being said. Um, and, and I think um, one of the best pieces that we've embraced, I hope, and I want to, for all staff who are listening, I want to reiterate, um, I think we are doing a good job of trying to pace ourselves. I don't think any of us are expecting uh, to be running a sprint right now. And um, sometimes anxiety gets picked up. Uh, people get nervous and, and want to do such a great job because that's our nature and we start ramping up the pace. And uh, I just want to encourage all of us to continue to take it slow and easy, make sure we're kind of comfortable with what we're presenting, kind of taking the next steps. The state actually thought about this amazingly ahead of time by telling us, aim for September 1st to get most of your ducks in order, 
take those first few weeks to kind of just figure this out. And so I want to encourage everyone to continue to pace ourselves. We can't expect the world on this first few months. And so we're going to continue to do that. And I think the parents will appreciate it too, as they're all learning how to deal with the platforms. Um, we've had some amazing forums that have been available for parents. Um, technology crew has done an amazing job of offering parent meetings to help instruct about the technology um, and uh, give opportunities for parents to ask questions, get hands-on work. I know for a fact that several parents have called independently and asked for some assistance and our tech team has provided nonstop assistance to parents. So folks at the site on the ground level as well as here at the district office. So that's um, also something that continues to be available and will continue to be offering for folks as we're dealing with the technology. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we have a, uh, um, the learning con continuity plan is being worked on right now. Um, as much as the state wants to say, well, we're gonna give you a break on LCAP, you don't have to worry about that, but we need this little plan done on the side. This little plan done on the side is not nearly easy at all. And you can talk with Director Silva, she can give you some extra pieces of information on that. Um, the continuity plan is a good idea. The idea is to, that schools are responsible for answering to the students who are not keeping up, that are absent, that we're not catching, that they're falling through the cracks. The idea of that plan is to make sure that students are continuing to learn and we're providing those, those opportunities. So we're, we're monitoring attendance, we're monitoring participation rates, and we're monitoring how it is our staff are keeping up with those students who are not keeping up. I think it's an, an important and vital thing that we do. Uh, the problem is that there's not a, not a lot of guidance out there for this. In fact, the next webinar on this is coming up on Monday and the plan is due very soon. So we're working hard on that. I would just um, uh, encourage parents to understand that we are working on that and we want to get as much engagement as we can on the plan. But at the same time, um, there are a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of hoops that we're trying to jump through. So um, any questions, by all means, please contact us um, at the district office. Um, the back to school nights have been uh, addressing uh, COVID related issues as well. Um, and as we saw from the high school, I think that um, the teachers, that the classified and admin have done a good job of trying to embrace how this, this uh, technical uh, coordination happens for, for our students. Um, and so I think we're gonna continue to learn from how that works and be able to um, keep making those evenings available. In fact, this morning, I believe that Principal Rogeman had a uh, coffee with the principal um, that went well and it was a virtual meeting. And so again, I want to encourage, um, just make sure the public really hears and knows that we're doing our very best to offer as many opportunities for them to engage as possible. Uh, our lunch service programs continue um, at a very high level. Um, and so I want to congratulate um, Director Lip on her amazing work and with her staff. Um, we're continuing to feed our students that need it and, um, and they're doing a wonderful job with that. The, um, we are uh, um, working with the county superintendents. I continue to meet with them twice a week. Um, and um, we're doing the very best we can to get guidance from the county, um, both the, excuse me, the CDE, as well as the CDC, as well as the CDPH, the County uh, Department of Public Health of the state, or the California. And um, there's still a lot of gaps in the guidance that we're getting. And so um, uh, we're at a little bit of a lag along with all the school districts in terms of trying to get definition on some of the work that we're doing around our response to distance learning and COVID. In other words, one of those pieces, for example, the um, allowance of small groups back onto our campus. Where, while our MOU allows, it uh, doesn't um, uh, deny teachers the opportunity to volunteer to come on campus to work with some small students, small groups of students as needed. Um, the problem is we don't have the guidance of how that looks from the California Department of Public Health. We need that guidance in order to be able to operate those small groups. So those kind of little hitches um, we're, we're still working through and we will continue to um, publicize those, um, those pieces of guidance as we get them. Um, so please stay tuned on that and we'll continue to work with it. We'll put on the updates to the extent that we can do it as well. And um, we do plan on having some more town halls coming up to do just check-ins with parents, see how we're doing, uh, get a gauge of how the progress is going. But, we want to give it a couple of weeks to just get things settled and moving forward. Um, and uh, I think that's really all I wanted to talk about today. I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, we've gotten lots of emails in from folks and we're trying to respond in a timely fashion. Um, and um, uh, if you ever need anything, uh, everyone who's listening and we'll put this in the um, document tomorrow, please make sure to let us know here in the office and we'll respond as best as we can. I'm happy to answer any questions um, that might come up if I can. Great. Thank you, Dr. Boris. Um, well, and, and you um, keep the board um, updated 
very regularly so we um we know what's going on at as much as we can <laughs> um board do you have any direct questions at the moment um christy no i just think it's it's wonderful that we're finally back and it's it's rolling and i appreciate what you say that there's this little um time element to just really get ramped up and um excellent work all, after all the stuff the teachers and staff has had to go through this summer in order to kick off this year so it feels so good to 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 be to be moving along now so good work thank you john half you're muted We can't no, hear you. I, I think I messed it up. Sorry, John. Hold on. <laughs> there there we go. Sorry. I, well, again, um, I would echo what Christy said. It, it's been a long haul since, uh, you know, essentially since March. And uh, thank you for keeping us updated. And really thanks to the uh, teachers and staff and, and everyone associated with trying to get us to a clean start. Um, I have heard mostly positive things, and I appreciate uh, your continued updates to us. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Brian? Just uh, uh, first of all, I appreciate everybody's efforts and in, in the, in the district keeping us in in the loop on all these things. And we're, you know, we get more information these days, I think, than ever. Um, CSBA constantly with updates, too. And, and I did have one question just relating to um, the email that Matt Binder had sent out earlier today. And um, the, it mentions in there the, the monthly newsletter. There, there was a bunch of other stuff that was in that email. Do you know, was that widely distributed to families in the district? Because there was some really great information in there and, and help links and things like that. I think we're going to be putting that into the Friday update. Uh, Mr. Okay. Binder, is that correct? Uh, yeah, so the, a couple of things related to that uh, question there, Brian. Um, one is the, the newsletter, which is kind of built on that SMORE platform, which Mandy uses as well for the uh, weekly break that she distributes. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I send her information directly from our department's newsletter. Um, so that's the, the, the newsletter that was included in the link to the update that we sent you is a district-wide, staff-wide, all employees mm -hmm. uh, newsletter. Um, okay. Mainly because it's, it, it really pertains to some of the projects, the internal projects that we're working on mostly. Um, but yeah, we kind of cherry pick information from that and, and send it off to Mandy so she can include it in some of her communications. Okay. All right. Well, I wanted to thank you for that email because there's a tremendous amount of information in there and, and uh, I'm still going through it and, and moving around. And, but it's, uh, again, thank you for, for doing that. It's helpful and, and comforting to know all these different things are in the works too, because sometimes you don't hear about it. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Tom Walton, do you think? Yeah. Thanks, Debbie. Um, yeah, you know, I appreciate the hard work. Um, I think, you know, I, I always stress the flexibility thing, primarily because, you know, every situation is different. I know for some students and some teachers, this has been an easier start to the year and for others, it's been harder. So I just want to continue to remind myself and ourselves that, you know, I think flexibility is key because everybody's situation is different. Um, I, I think we're going to continue to see some challenges as people adapt to the tools, both teachers and students. And I think there's going to continue to be an adjustment period through that. So I know we're trying to be more uh, rigorous as the state has directed us around uh, attendance and, and things like that. But at the same time, um, you know, it's hard to take into account rolling blackouts and technical issues and network issues and software issues and things like that. So, um, I think we're off to a good start. I think obviously there's there's things that can improve and I know the principals and administration and teachers will continue to look for ways to do that. Uh, I know we're doing the best we can to support the families out there. 
Um, you know, if you have a large house with one kid per room, it's totally different than if you have three kids in an apartment, all trying to distance learn in different grades at different times. So um, I think that's just important to keep in mind. You know, and even though I'm a computer person, I just have to say, um, you know, I, I still have my doubts about all the screen time for the kids in elementary school. I just can't wrap my head around how you get a first grader or second grader to sit and stare at a laptop. Um, I guess if it was just YouTube videos or TikTok videos, it would be one thing, but to try to actually get them engaged on a computer and, and focused on a computer in a meaningful way for that amount of time seems like a real challenge. So, uh, you know, I appreciate everybody trying to think that through and find ways to do that. But, uh, you know, I know the kids really miss the sports and they miss running around with their friends on the playground and things like that. So I'm still hopeful that uh, we can get back to that someday. Thank you, John. Um, okay, um, this is a um, information item, but um, I'll go ahead and open up to the public um, for any um, comments. Uh, Carolyn Swanson. Good evening, everyone. Carolyn Swanson here. Uh, I have a question about the new Chromebooks, if they've arrived or not, and when families can expect to have their old ones replaced. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Binder, are you, um, or Mr. Mejia, are you able to answer that now or? So our new Chromebooks are in, they're currently being processed. They've been delivered. Some of them have already been delivered to the sites. They're still being processed by the uh, library media technicians. Um, these Chromebooks, uh, the, the reason we've had the existing Chromebooks for quite a number of years. The reason they were able to last so long is because mostly they were um, in cabinets and classrooms. So our um, idea was to use this new fleet to have in classrooms and have them ready for when students come back to prolong their life and cut down the repair costs and use the existing fleet that's still working um, to, to have uh, available to any students in the district whose parents have indicated that they need that support at home. Thank you. Okay, seeing um, no other comments. Um, okay, thank you all um, for- Trustee oh. Crandall? Yes. I'm sorry, uh, this is Carolyn Swanson again. I just wanted to verify that I heard um, Mr. Mejia correctly. So we have new Chromebooks, but we're not going to distribute them to families who are struggling with slow Wi-Fi, poor cameras, poor speakers. We're going to keep them in cupboards. Um, I'd like to honestly ask how that is putting the kids first and making distance learning um, something that is successful. So a couple of things uh, in relation to that inquiry. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, First off, the performance of our existing Chromebooks, that, those that are not the new, not, not part of the new fleet, is uh, quite reliable still, actually. And we have not heard of there being widespread issues with speed, connectivity, in terms of the actual unit's ability to get on and to stay on. Um, connectivity really is uh, you know, it's a complex issue because it's, it's not just the the actual device, the actual computing device. It, it, it's, there's a lot of factors involved in how much internet speed is available at any given time. Um, also, we haven't received any complaints about the camera uh, resolution or the audio on any of the, uh, most of the Chromebooks that we have uh, distributed as is, and that would be our, our legacy fleet. Um, when we do receive uh, complaints or you know, questions about how it's performing and, and uh, if, if issues are brought up, we immediately swap it out. We have the capacity to do that. So um, we, in terms of a, a comparison between the, the current Chromebooks and the new fleet, we do know that the new fleet is obviously new and and probably somewhat faster but uh whether or not the, the comparison is so much more noticeable right out of the box um I, i'm not sure we would we would see that uh you know mr mejia if you've got another uh opinion or a perspective on this that would help yeah um i'll 
the issue with the legacy Chromebooks is that the vast majority of them have stopped receiving auto updates from Google. What that means is not, doesn't, that does not mean that they're no longer functional, that they're no longer working well. Uh, what that means is that with time, and we haven't reached this point yet, we will have, the, we will have uh, larger issues of accessing certain websites or certain apps. Um, so the majority of the fleet is still working and still able to connect to all the resources that teachers and students are relying on uh, right now. Um, one of the things I did want to reiterate was with uh, Mr. Binder said is if a family is having a, an issue that can't be resolved within the first few moments, we are making available the ability to swap that device out uh, with, with another uh, legacy Chromebook. Some of those Chromebooks, I will say, are still receiving um, uh, auto updates. So, so they are still receiving all those uh, security patches and firmware patches that are available on, on the Google Chrome OS system. Um, the new Chromebooks um, do have a better wireless card, but again, wireless speed connectivity is, is not just an, an issue of what your network uh, interface controller is. It, it's a combination of, there's many layers to it. It's not just as a one factor thing. So uh, we can, you know, we can connect with a uh, MacBook Pro or our cell phones and onto the same device in the same home and have drastically different results. A lot of it is depending on what else is on that network, what else is running at the same time, what else is being used uh, on that bandwidth. We have recommended to parents uh, during our uh, parent nights and our IT tech support nights and, and any correspondence that, that any non-essentials during class time, if they can be taken off the, the Wi-Fi to help with the connectivity speeds. But we have not been receiving many uh, tech um, issues regarding uh, camera resolution or, or things of, of that nature. And if we do, and if it's hardware, we just swap it out and it seems to clear out the problem. Thank you um, both for clarifying that. Um, and, and I would say if that is not the case for a particular family that they um, email the district, um, email Dr. Porras if you need to, um, or the board to let us know. Um, but um, I also have not heard of anything not being addressed, so. Um. Respectfully, respectfully, President Crandall, on this meeting tonight, we've got very few families. Um, and we have maybe seven families that I count. And I do think that topics like this that at first glance don't, wouldn't make sense to the general public. Like if I said, like if I posted on Facebook or I told a families, hey, we've got new Chromebooks, they'd say, why don't we have them? And if, if the board feels that it's a valid reason that we're not distributing them, I would really request as right now, just a member of the public, that the school district communicate that with families, that the school district comes to the families instead of having the burden be on the family shoulders to come to you guys um, we, all those families were at those planning meetings hearing over and over again that new Chromebooks were on the way. So I do think that some communication between the district and families would be wonderful. Okay, uh, we can, um, uh, hold on John, please. Um, we, we can communicate that, but we are not going to just um, issue all of those Chromebooks if, they're, if the current ones are working. So, um, but again, uh, we can communicate that to in tomorrow's um, email. Uh, Dr. Porras, is that um, doable? Well, let's, let's uh, uh, if the board is giving me direction to do that, certainly can do that. And let's, let's, I, I'm not sure what the, the, the extent of the conversation, let's, let's finish this yeah. conversation. So, but we can certainly put out information tomorrow. I mean, we can put out information that, um, that we have them, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, that they need to be issued. Um, John, did you have something you want to add? Well, I'm an exact opposite. We spent almost $600,000 to update this fleet so that if we had an entire year of this, we weren't in any, any way. We should not be holding these to 2021, 2022. If we, have a, if we have them, we bought them to put them out in the hands of the people who need them. Yeah, and, and I agree. There's, I no, agree there's no reason to say, well, these might be good enough when we bought them very specifically to be better. And we had that $600,000 and that was the vote. Thank you. Well, um, 
Uh, Caroline, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to let me um, have a conversation real quick with John. Um, John, I don't disagree with you. I do agree with you on that. But what I'm hearing from both Mr. Binder and Mr. Mejia is that they are handling the issues that are, are being reported. If a family doesn't report something, we can't, like Brian said earlier, we can't help them if they don't report it. And I don't think we should just issue brand new devices just because we have them. Um, and if, if, if the other board members disagree with me, then maybe we need a, lot, um, a different discussion on that. Um, so with that, I mean, I will ask the board if you do have a different opinion on that. Um, Christy? Um, I, I have to be honest with you. I, I feel like I don't have the knowledge to understand um, exactly what the need would be. As far as handing them out, I, I would just look to the IT department for greater clarity personally. I mean, I, but if, if things aren't working, such as uh, cameras or microphones, and there's an issue, it would seem to me that that would be incumbent upon that family to make sure that that gets clear so they have equipment that's, that's worthy of their student. Yeah. Thank you. May I add uh, one, one more point, I think? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I think it's important to realize that, you know, I, I, I understand we are in a different time right now, but we are not in a dire st straight with regards to uh, making devices available for students who need them, or even those students who prefer to have one at one location and another at another. We, we do have enough devices to cover our needs. I think the distinction here is whether or not brand new devices, which haven't even been inventoried yet, uh, and we're still working on configuring them for, um, to enroll them into our domain, into our actual system, the management system, whether or not they should just be distributed because they're new. I would say that our intent with getting the new fleet was to provide them to students. These are student devices. And we wanna first and foremost, make sure that they are ready and available, secure and safe in order to do that. And, and, and that process is currently underway without losing the ability to provide a student device to any family in need that is fully functional, fully capable of handling all the performance requirements that are thrown at it right now. We're in, we're in a very, obviously, in a very lucky position to, be, to, to have those options in front of us. We want to do this in a way that preserves the new fleet just as long as we've had the legacy fleet. And that's really the intent here, so that students for the long term, in a sustainable manner, can use these. And the, the money is well spent, and it is wisely used and, and preserved as long as we, we, we have it. So, so we're not shortchanging students. I don't see that as being the case at all because we're not giving them a brand new Chromebook. Right. Uh, not at all. I think what we're doing is ensuring that our students, when they come back, have the best technology possible without making any exceptions in the present time. And I will add to that as well that um, we have put out a lot of different ways for, for the community to, to get a hold of us directly. Um, I, I, we've been answering emails, we've been answering phone calls uh, late into the evening. The, the tech team has been troubleshooting, uh, you know, all day long. So I will qualify that there, there is not a, um, a situation where families uh, are, are not getting the tech support they need with these uh, current devices. Um, you know, so one of, one of the uh, earlier public comments was was able to be made because we were troubleshooting on the back end with them so that they could make that public comment. So parents, uh, we've put out help tickets. We've we've they've been working. Parents have been requesting uh, support through there, and they've been uh, meeting the needs as as to the best of our ability. Um, and like I mentioned, a lot of the issues we're having are not necessarily due to hardware issues related to the existing Chromebooks that are uh, in homes right right now. Thank you both for, for clarifying and adding that additional information. Um, Brian, do you have a, a feeling on this? Do I? Yeah. Me, me Brian? <laughs> yeah, you, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Well, I just, I wanted to add uh, just more of an observation than anything, because I get what um, Matt and Jonathan are saying too, in, in that their te tech issues, and I just, I experience this every day in my house when thankfully my wife doesn't ever come to the meetings because uh, I'm going to talk about her for a second. Um, <laughs> and my wife is in Carolyn, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. So, but uh, um, where she'll, she'll ask me, why isn't the internet working? Like I'm supposed to know, first of all, because I don't know when the internet isn't working, but we had this running the joke for a while where she's like, you know, every time you turn the microwave on, the internet doesn't work. It's like, well, that's absurd. Well, it turns out she's actually right um, that the microwave, microwaves can interfere with Wi-Fi signals, which I was something I never knew. I thought she was just out of her mind. But actually, after I did some research, it was the case. And we had connectivity issues every time I'd put my cup of coffee in the microwave. And of course it wasn't affecting my internet because I was heating up my coffee. So I wasn't even in front of the, you know. so anyway, the long point I'm making is that, is what Jonathan and, and Matt already said too, is that there are myriad issues that could be impacting uh, whatever tech issues people are having. If people are having tech issues, we do want to know about it, which is why I kind of led at the beginning of this evening with, there are channels to address those and and we need to make sure that people are going through the right ones and if they don't you know if they're not getting help um through the district then yeah let us know about it or let ralph know about it or somebody but don't you know it, it's not going to help to put it up on next door or facebook or or anything like that it's like those aren't official district channels for communicating thank you brian um john malton any additional opinions on that on the uh, Chromebooks? Sure, Debbie, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, the one thing I've found, at least in the short time I've been on the board, is um, the public being in the small community where I've never been shy about sharing their opinion or thoughts with me as a board member personally about anything, which I actually really appreciate because, um, you know, I'm uh, not always there in town. I, I work outside of town and, uh, you know, People have found my email and I get lots of emails every week and lots of feedback from folks. Um, I haven't gotten any negative feedback from anyone, I'm happy to say, about the Chromebooks. So um, I was a little surprised uh, that this topic came up, but I will certainly ask around now that I know uh, there might be concerns about that and, and see what people say. Um, i would also just add that, you know, if we're going to talk about technology in schools, as a technologist by profession for 25 years, I'd ask what we agendize that for about four hours one night so I can <laughs> fully opinion about everything I feel about technology in schools. Uh, I couldn't limit my comments to only Chromebooks. I don't have that capability. It would take me a long time to give you my opinions on everything. So I'm gonna spare you all that tonight and just say um, I have no further comments. <laughs> okay, Debbie, thank you. Debbie, you skipped me in this. Yes, John. No, I didn't skip you. Go ahead, though. I mean, I didn't plan on, I wasn't intentionally skipping you. I thought you gave your well, here's opinion the, already. Here's the thing. We, we made a promise when we bought them that these would go out. We were not going to put them in a closet in case the year went through and we went through and the warranty runs out on them before they've been used. These are things that actually should. We should be at least taking this step. Is everything working? If there's a significant difference in improvement, and I understand what, what Matt said. He said, you know, I, I'm not giving them out until they're secure. Yes, I'm not asking that. Um, you know, secure, make sure they do what you need to do and whatever tracking we put into these systems, everything is still above board. That's not changed. But when I hear we're going to put them onto the racks in the classrooms, which is what was said, until such time as students might come back, that's an issue. That means we just spent a lot of money for something that really, you know, has the potential to sit there. I'm hoping we're out in January, but, you know, June is a problem. Yeah, um, John, I just have to just, I just disagree. So um, I'm not saying what you're saying is is completely wrong um, or anything, um, but I um, am trusting what we're doing and I don't think that is the plan. That might've been what you heard or what was said. I really honestly don't feel that was the intention. Um, so let's, um, and I think the rest of the board is kind of on the same page not to say this I, is the end of not to say this is the end of the conversation but for tonight yes 
Um, but um, we're going to keep that in mind. I'm going to go back to read on and listen to that meeting when we discuss that because uh, again, I don't, I don't think that was the, ever the plan to just issue with them out just because we have them, well, um, but also not to just keep them because we don't want to give them out. I don't think that's the intention at all either. I agree well, with. Don't yes, we have Christine. a tech committee that has yes. come along that is to, supposed to make decisions on this thing as far as yes. how things are supposed to unroll as we move forward? Yes, I mean, and we have the... Uh, I get yeah, we have opinions, but we've got a group that has been designated to do this, I believe. Exactly. We also have the tech team who just spoke, and they're the experts, in my opinion. So um, for now, um, I think we'll, t we'll end this conversation <laughs> um, because this is just an information discussion item. It's not, we're not voting on anything. But... Um, uh, She's gone. Okay, I was gonna um, offer Carolyn to come back and discuss that um, before we end, but she is no longer there. So we will move on. Um, thank you all for that. Um, it won't be the end of it, John Path, just so you know. We'll just oh, we'll talk about okay. it next time. Okay. I'll come on back to it. On the second. Perfectly good IMAX. The second or third or whatever. Um, and we'll talk about it again at the next COVID um, update. Okay, uh, information discussion B, a uh, review of legal fees 2019-20. Um, uh, Assistant Superintendent Chen Bindiv, I'll um, hand that over to you. Thank you. I think the rest of the evening I have all the items. Okay. So last. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> um, legal fees, uh, the board has asked uh, staff to bring to take a look at the legal costs. Um, probably this is the first time for 19, um, this is for fiscal year 1920, and which is a good thing. And um, so what we have presented, um, this report was actually in June, but because of the volume, the number of items, so we'll pull that. Uh, since then, we haven't a chance to update until the end of June, uh, because we had to produce a budget and then now we're closing the books. So this is as on May 11, and we put in a description, the very left. This is on page 102, it's for the public, it's in a board packet. Um, so I will not be showing on the screen, I'll just going through the, this on a one page only. Um, because again, our confidential issues, we only list the description, more generic description, instead of the specific case, name, on, and so on. The cost, total uh, expenditure or cost that we have spent as of May 11 is $81,248.08. And I can just, um, because we, we um, f already finished the year, fiscal year 1920, we spent um, the total for the year is $124,445.40. And we'll update that at the next board meeting, for the next board meeting. Um, like I said, we need, you know, if, if we, because we're getting these reports from the, um, the law firm be, of, to, to have a breakdown of these uh, categories. So we don't get on time, we'll bring it back to the, instead of the September 2nd, uh, the third will be maybe on the September, September 3rd. It just okay. is information. Okay. okay, so um, you wanna discuss it on the third then and table this for now? Uh, no, I mean, this is as of May 11th, so it's up for discussion, it's represented. But what I'm saying, additional the the year for the whole fiscal year, uh -huh. I can bring back the whole- Oh, I see. Up as of June 30th, but as of uh, May 11th, certainly, is, this is our facts, it's real. Okay, all right, um, thank you. This is, um, uh, as it says, it's just information. I um, was requested um, by the board to, to bring this um, for discussion. So, um, Christy, do you have any uh, immediate questions or anything for Song? You're muted if you do. No, thank there you, you go. so much. I'm shaking my head no and no thank yeah. you. Oh, okay. John Path. Yeah, how does this compare with uh, years prior? My recollection is we've been as high as uh, almost 300,000 and uh, this seems very moderate, particularly given the 
the uh, odds and ends that come through? Um, we look. I look at the last two years. Um, at least I think we we've been very been mindful of anytime we call a lo the lawyer. Um, so that's one of the measures I'm sure um, when we do that. But the last two years not been as high. It could be you know cases specific cases in out in prior years uh, to you know to go up to that kind of cost that level of cost. And we haven't seen a cost that high probably in about six seven years. Um, there was a time that we had a very very high year and it was there was just a lot of issues going on. There were just several issues and we had multiple lawyers going on it. It was a it was a, a raucous year. Um, we haven't seen that in a while and I think a big chunk of that has to do. Um, with kind of uh, making use of, of some of our, our councils and committees through ACSA or CSBA or, or CASBO. Um, we've been doing a lot more of that lately and that's been helping, so. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate the information. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Brian? Uh, the only one question was, so the, the, did I hear correctly that the fiscal year end for June 30 was 124 grand. Was that where it came in, Song? Yes. Okay. All right. That, I just wanted to make sure I heard correctly. Thank you. Um, John Walton. Um, you know, given all that we've asked them to do for us this year with all the complex things going on and looking at this through the lens of how much I pay the lawyers uh, in my job, I think we got a good deal this year. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, okay, very good. Um, okay, Song, well, um, thank you for bringing this. Um, this is information, but I will open up for um, public comment if there's any questions or comments on this item for legal fees. And while we're waiting on that, um, uh, I guess um, I would say that Song, since there's not a whole lot of concern or questions, um, I don't think we need anything for the next meeting, but we'll just continue having this report every year or something. Does that work for you? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm not seeing any public comment, so I'll bring that back. Thank you again. And you're up next for review of 2020-21 state budget um, uh, Senate Bill 98. That's very specific, right? Yes. Okay. okay. This is going to be a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to share the screen here. Okay. Um, and hopefully you can see, can you see the presentation? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. This is Senate Bill Budget Act um, for 2021. So I have two screens going on, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm touching my buttons here. Um, Proposition 98, um, I'm, I'm just cut down, cut right to Prop 98 and not talk about other items in the state budget, budget such as childcare, um, prisons, and all this various spending um, uh, allocations. Um, so just focusing on the K-12 um, portion of that. So K-12 of Prop 98 is now 63.2 billion and signed by the governor on June 29th, uh, a day before the June 30th deadline. Um, well, of course, we all know that, you know, the difference of this dollar amount between what was in June signed by the governor versus what was actually proposed to gov by the governor in January is a huge difference. It's a $17 billion uh, difference. Um, a swing of in, within five, six months, uh, instead of a positive amount, a uh, huge reduction um, to the Prop 98 uh, allocation. There are two, um, you know, uh, there are some major things, but two sets of uh, uh, um, factors that i like to bring forth here is, first of all, is the deferral. Um, it does not impact us directly, uh, thankfully, because we are a basic school district. We do get a fixed amount, it's called a fixed stated portion, and that is not actually, it's not, was not uh, uh, proposed by the government to be reduced or to be de deferred. We're still going to get this fixed amount every month, starting in July, 
And so we are looking away this uh, that way. Um, other uh, uh, counter uh, peers of LCFS school districts are really going to be uh, suffering uh, starting in November because deferment is going to start that month. Um, however, one uh, indirect impact would be uh, rental, you know, um, unit from uh, from Monterey Bay Charter School. Um, their cash flow, uh, the contract with them was approved by the board in June, so they have a big deferment, and they asked us to you know, to defer um, collecting the rent from them if the deferment was uh, in free, uh, put into forth or signed to law by the governor. And it did happen. So we'll be working with them, um, you know, in terms of uh, collecting receipts, uh, rental from them. If they can get a loan from um, some uh, in the market or some other ways, we'll do that. But at least this will be an indirect impact to us. It doesn't change uh, uh, yearly collection a rental collection from MBSC, MBCS, but um, it does change our cash flow a little bit. Um, no fair share reduction. Um, I know a couple of meetings ago, um, the board has asked about the fair share. Uh, real quickly, this is just years and years ago, starting in 2013 when this uh, LCFF first came, came into place. Um, every district has those categor categorical grants and basic is school district got to retain those grants as well as LCFF. However, when LCFF dollars were cut, um, some of those um, dollars will also proportionately reduce for basic school district as well. But in this case here, we do not experience that. We get, still get to retain our money. So one of the impacts is not just a fiscal, but also ADA and instructional minutes. What happened is that the, the governor set into law is that for 2021, uh, the ADA, which is average daily attendance, uh, maintained at the level of P2 or second period of 1920, which is up to February 29, meaning it defaults to 1920 school year. Um, so the good thing is you're declining enrollment school district, you know, uh, especially for LCFF school district they get to bank the higher amount of the prior school year. But however, if you are experiencing increase in uh, enrollment number of students, you don't get the additional dollars. So that's the flip side of that. You know, as always, there's pluses and, uh, and pluses and minuses. And so the minuses would be that increasing ADA or enrollment school district will not get additional dollars. But given the, the dynamics in the state of California, um, we are not seeing many school district, uh, districts experiencing increasing number of students. So that would be, you know, it's actually a good thing. Um, just real quickly in terms of February 29th, that's not the length of the second period of P2 level. It normally goes all the way into April, but because as we all know, the, uh, the uh, coronavirus started in mid, um, closure started in mid-March. So school district were held harmless uh, since then. And then the period to count the uh, attendance was actually uh, pushed back word to uh, when the school was in full session in February. But as uh, our SB 98, there are some changes. Um, there are no um, legal requirements of instructional minutes for the whole fiscal year, but there are annual it suspends the annual instructional minutes, but the minimum school day minute requirements are, uh, are in full force. Uh, 180 minutes for um, transitional K to kindergarten, um, 230 minutes for um, first through uh, the third grade level, inclusive of third grade level, and then 240 minutes for four through 12th grade level, inclusive of 12th uh, grade levels. They're also maintaining the number of instructional days, um, still 180 instructional days, and there's gonna be a penalty if the number length of the year um, is not maintained. Um, however, there are some other suspensions other than the annual instructional minutes. Also the PE minutes has been suspended. The process for emergency J13A has been suspended. Um, as we all know, the fires that have been going on right now, 
this issue, the J13 has been already brought into light a lot. Uh, so the state says um, you will not be penalized for the minutes, but however, for those dist districts that will be impacted, they still need to file is for, because to make sure that, um, make sure that the school day, the minimum school day minute requirements and the instructional days requirements are maintained. Otherwise it's gonna be a penalty um, from the state. Um, instructional minutes, uh, instructional time for uh, school year 2021, we all know that there are going to be th uh, three actual options, in-person instruction, distance learning, and a hybrid instru instructional model. Um, at that time, the governor, when he signed to law, it made it very clear uh, the legislature intent was to make sure uh, the LDAs uh, that has, uh, they have the flexibility in developing instructional models. But then, then the, the key point is that providing in-person instruction to the greatest extent po possible, even though with the DL, um, uh, distance learning, the DL model, there's going to be the intent to show that, you know, there's a distance, uh, there's students and teacher interaction every day on a daily basis and a per pupil basis, which uh, Director Silva will talk about in September uh, when he, she presents this continuity learning plan to the board. So um, I'm going to just now dive into about the one-time funding. Um, this is just broken, broken down into uh, the seven pots or pockets of funds. Uh, we have a spreadsheet, it just, it won't fit into a PowerPoint. So I'm just trying to break it down to a ch in chunks. Uh, the first two, um, that all seven pots of funds, they're all one-time money. Uh, the first two do not require a uh, report, do, do not request submission of a report, uh, what they call the continuity learning plan. However, um, they're based on different uh, allocation uh, uh, methods. The first one is SB Senate Bill 117, um, and I put down resource code as far as the track for the business services, because each one of those, even though requirements, we don't have to present, we don't have to submit a plan, a report, uh, but it's still, you know, we're subject to special audit requirements. So in this, this one here, the first one is based on the first period ADA. Earlier we talked about second period. There's most school districts rely the funding on based on second period, but the funding for this one here um, is based on the first period. And our share is not that much. It's a little bit over $33,000. And I put down here the status for us, the funds have been spent. This is only the first, the only category that we have received the money. None of the following uh, six afterwards, we have not received any of those. So the second part um, is called the uh, ASSA funds. funds. Um, I won't go into the criteria. I mean, we're gonna post this PowerPoint in, on our web and the public can see this. This is based on Title I Part A uh, money. So wherever that um, the requirements for us, uh, for Pacific Group USD, uh, the, the federal government will be uh, allocating funds based on that. As of this date here, uh, we have spent 20% of this. And the reason, the major reason for this is because the extension the deadline, as you can see here, is up to September 2022. You know, the others have a much shorter timeline for us to spend the money. The third one is, um, is uh, you know, federal CARES funds. Um, they, you know, a lot of them generically, you hear about federal CARES fund, but specifically within each one, they, it has a distinction. This one is based on, the, um, I don't know, the, you can see this is called supplemental concentration pro proportion. So the requirement, again, is this kind of SC uh, uh, requirement. Again, you know, different how we get to the dollar amount, $218,000, different set of calculations. Now, starting with this group um, of funds, we need to, um, to submit the plan. And um, generically, all these groups, uh, the next uh, five group of funds will be called learning loss mitigation funds. Um, the deadline is December 30th, 20, December 30th, 2020. The next one, again, is, um, is LCFF, based on LCFF distribution, but is based on coronavirus relief portion of it. Is instead of a supplemental concentration portion. Again, the same timeline. 
we have only until December 30, 2020. Now, um, the CBOs, uh, at least within, you know, within the Murray County, we have tried to lobby very hard uh, in um, Sacramento to Sacramento, Sacramento that we would like to have an extension because when this came about was only about a few weeks ago in July when we first barely uh, knew about how much and what kind of requirements, what the funds can be spent on. And yet for us to come up with a plan and some of, some of this will actually need to have a report submitted by September 30th, but the timeline is only 90 days later. That really, really pushed really, um, a hardship on school districts. First of all, to me to come up with a plan and where we can spend the money on and also um, really to do the reporting. Um, but unfortunately, what we heard is that the federal part of it, the federal portions, um, it is what it is. It's going to stay until December 30th. Um, group five is, um, this is based on propos uh, Proposition 98 portion. Um, it's a little bit less for us. It's $159,885. It's actually this, it's not a dot, it's a comma. Um, this timeline, again, is December 30th, 2020. And this is, all, again, continuation of that, um, the need to require to submit the plan to the board and uh, as, as part of a learning loss mitigation uh, uh, initiative. The uh, this, um, second from last is six item six. This is a gear fund. It's called, also called Governor's Emergency, Ed, Emergency Education Relief Funds. Um, and our share is $110,000. This um, has until September 30th, 2020. The portion actually, this is the money that um, was given to the state of California from the federal government, but Governor Newsom decided to, you know, to give up um, their share of the funds to help LEAs to, to, you know, to cover themselves through this period. So this is very um, much appreciated given the time that we're in, a um, little bit more money. Um, it's not a lot for PGUSD, but it's something. Uh, especially this can covers, um, you know, this funds can cover stu uh, student nutrition and also professional development. Uh, some of these funds, this is what we're gonna do to help relieve the general fund. The board has approved, um, one of the examples for student nutrition uh, costs is that the board has approved the July uh, vouchers. So we're going to shift some of the costs to here to this part of money to relieve the general fund. The last part is uh, of this uh, group of funding is um, the gear funds, but is called, you know, is based on a CRF coronavirus portion of it. Uh, again, it's, it's very complex, but um, you know, in a nutshell, this is based, this is based on each different uh, allocation methods. Um, this is again, this is uh, the timeline is December 30th, 2020. To summarize, um, as of August 6, um, the reason we put down here August 6 because it's still subject to change. When we received this um, uh, notification, it probably changed that three times. You know, the, uh, the amounts uh, varies somewhat. So as of August 6, the uh, uh, amount is 1.1, a little bit over $1.1 million. Um, as of this point, 50% has been spent and the balance is a little bit over 550,000. And as you know, today is August 20th, that number has already changed. We have already spent quite a bit of it already. Um, the next one is special ed. Um, surprisingly this year, we have good news about special ed. Um, as we all know, um, we, the general fund contributes to a special ed program. And for decades, you know, school districts have been arguing, it's been really, uh, fighting for more money from the federal government because a lot of mandates, a lot of requirements uh, imposed on school districts, but with no corresponding funding. So this is one of the surprises. Uh, one of the surprises. Um, this money, 545 million, was the increase the base of 625 dollars per ADA. So what does that mean for us? You know, 625 dollars per ADA. That equates to about 300 thousand dollars for us. This is a lot of money. Uh, for us that we can use to help uh, special ed uh, services. 
you know, personnel, anything we related to a, uh, related to a special program. Um, there's also law incidence funds. We'll know how much we're going to get from a SELPA. Uh, again, this is additional funds for um, law, law incidents. Um, the rest is not that much. Um, $500,000 is for studies, and the same thing with the work groups, $600,000. So this is really a good thing for special ed. Um, um, employer contribution rates. Um, this is just to uh, revisit what we have presented to the board and share with the public in June about this um, employer contribution rates. Now it's official. Uh, at that time when May revised, it was proposal by the governor. We thought it's going to be some deals, some exchanges between the governor and the legislature, but it turns out that this item stayed intact. Uh, at the end, it's still a really a good thing. Um, the savings is still pretty huge um, in terms of percentage. 2.25% um, relief for CalSTRS, that translates into about $384,000 for PGUSD, and for CalPERS is 1.9%. And it's a two-year agreement, so it's 2021 and 21-22. Collectively, it's a little bit, um, close to about a million dollars. And this is all subject, actual savings subject to change because this is based on, just based on projections. And actual, you know, the payroll, when payroll happens every month, and uh, the savings will change, will fluctuate somewhat. But at least this is the estimates for us. 2021, $512,000, and 21, $2,127,000. $2, so all this will be, uh, will be included in our presentation to the board in October. Uh, we're going to close the books and, and present uh, an audit actuals for 1920 in September, but then we'll come with the budget revisions um, to the board in October. And I think that's it in terms of um, budget, uh, the SB 98. Any questions? You say that's it, like that was just easy, just one plus one. <laughs> Um, well, <laughs> wants to reveal as well. Come yeah. on. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> um, uh, I, no, I really appreciate your your summary here. Um, I really didn't really realize that uh, how much help the state is kind of giving us in this situation. Um, not that we couldn't use more, but um, I think it's great. Um, I'll go ahead and open up to the board though for any um, other questions, um, Christy. You might be muted. You are muted. Okay, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we'll move to John Path, come back to Christy. John, do you have any questions? Well, on the CalPERS, CalSTRS relief, um, is there any uh, discussion at the state level as to whether or not any of these reductions are permanent or are they coming back in 2026, 27? Um, or, sorry, not in 2026, 27, but by 2026, 27. They come back. No, it's a two year temporary. It's two year temporary? That's correct. Are, Is that are, they gonna be, are they gonna try and reach in further after that? Does any, has there been any discussion to your knowledge? Uh, well, actually, you know, when it comes back to the rate, it will stabilize, st stabilize to the extent that the rate will be still the 18.2%. Um, you know, who knows what it's going to be afterwards. So at least this point, it's going to be the same rate uh, after 22, 23. So, okay. So following that up then, Song, it, it is, sounds an awful lot like, um, in fact, no one has dared venture past that because they can't take out 2%, they being the Cal, CalPERS, CalSTRS, can't take out you know, roughly 2% for two years and then not say, well, we have to catch up sooner or later. So right. we should have an expectation that someone says, no, no, 18 was wrong. We now need to be at 21 for a while. You're correct because especially with CalPERS is not really, um, CalPERS is still was going to increase the rate. It's only the governor using direct, redirecting the resources to buy down for LEAs. So this is not Cal CalPERS, their board still set the rates, especially with the investments. Who knows, right, the next, this uh, past few months, the investment rate, the return day, their goal is to have a 7%. Uh, 
um, we strongly doubt is, is average is going to be a, a return of 7% for CalPERS. So they will, they will very likely come back after 2022, 2022. Yeah. So, so in, in, uh, at a very, very high level, most of this appears to be grants, but the CalPERS, CalSTRS is almost alone. We don't have to pay back. Let's put it that way. So yeah, we, we don't have to pay back. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate the update. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Uh, Brian, have any questions? I don't have any questions. Just I wanted to thank you, Song, for putting this together and boiling it down in a way that makes it so easy to see what we're getting and the support that we're going to be getting. Because I think we're, you know, as we move through this, um, I think we're going to really be needing it and more of it. Yep. Um, John Walton. Thanks, Song. Yeah, great report. I appreciate it. Um, sorry, having Zoom problems. Let's see. Um, on, on one of the slides, you talked about the CARES funding. It looked like we haven't expended it all. Do you have a plan to expend the rest of it? Yes, we do. Um, we, it's going to be part of the continuity learning plan when we uh, direct a silver submits to the board, it's gonna be included in there. Okay, so, cause we've spent what you say, 20% of it so far of the 104. So what comes back at a future meeting will show how we're gonna spend the remainder of it by September 30th? Right, that's okay. correct. Right. Uh, the, September, um, the September 2022 may not, but the December 30th, 2020, we will be. Oh, sorry, yeah, my bad. Right, that I, I think. Know. Uh, our recommendation is to preserve as much as we can because these this are one-time dollars. Uh, times are tough and we need to preserve all these precious dollars. So anytime that we can you know, extend um, to September 30th, 2022, our recommendation, recommendation is not to spend the money first. Uh, yeah, I mean, I see your point and I agree with that to an extent. My only concern about that approach for us, and we can debate it in future budget discussions, is, you know, uh, my unfortunate experience with the feds has been they give us then they take it away. So I'm always worried if we try to bank it for a future day and they sweep it back, then, you know, we're left with a hole that we thought we had money and they've taken it away from us again. So, you know, you can never predict as the the national economy changes and administration changes and views on things change. If you might get more or might get less. So uh, I would just suggest we continue to keep an eye on it. And, and I think you have a good plan to bank it for a rainy day. Um, but I think we also need to keep our ears open um, if there's rumors that it might go away to spend it before we spend other monies. Absolutely. I, I think um, you're right that you know, um, the future, what the future holds, especially now with the deficits, they can reduce that, you know, the money allocations in other fashion. However, once we receive the cash, you know, they, um, I have never seen them would uh, retrieve the money, but I, you know, at the end of the day, right, it's gonna be, if they can uh, reduce uh, allocations um, some, from some of the ways, the district will be, you know, still be short of the funds. Yes. Right. In that regard, we'll be watching it very closely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Nothing else. I'm sure you have like a text alert song or something that you get, but yeah. Um, Christy, uh, back to you. Sorry, I almost forgot to go back to you. You were muted earlier. I know. I, I said so many wonderful words and they just all for naught. Uh, I just wanted to say it was wonderful to see in a few categories that there was some money coming to our benefit. And uh, as others have said, Song, wonderful the way you were able to chunk this, that it's easy for us to kind of discern what's going on with the budget. So thank you for those efforts. Okay, um, this uh, information item, but we'll go ahead and open up for um, public comment if there's any questions. Okay, seeing none, um, bringing it back. Thank you very much, Song, again. 
um, and you will just, I guess, stay put because you're next. <laughs> Um, yes. Next item is a review of the 2019-20 actual and 2021 estimated property tax revenues. Okay. Um, earlier we talked about the global budget overview of this. Is we're going to look at the primary source of income. One of the primary sources of income for us, probably the biggest, is uh, property tax dollars. And this is in regards to both 1920, the actual receipts, as well as uh, estimates for 2021. Uh, what I'm gonna do here um, uh, is uh, two of these uh, charts are in the board packet. Um, and I'm just using my life data here so that I could see the formula. So mm -hmm. just ignore all this data here and uh, we'll just look at this portion that shows us valuation. Uh, real quickly in terms of the process, what we get uh, every year around this time, uh, either July, you know, uh, early July or, or early August, we'll get assessed valuation projections from the assessor office. And what we get is what I call TRAs, which is tax rate areas. Um, and one of the processes that we do for us, especially for as basic as school district, because we need to make sure that absolutely as accurate as we can uh, to pluck his numbers and to get our projections. So what we do is we'll put into the TRAs based on these numbers, all these uh, parcel numbers, like a 004-00. Uh, I have no idea what this 7,544 because we're not getting the detailed information, but that's just what pertains to PGUSD. And so with that, we put in the, you know, the TRA rate for us uh, for each of these uh, for all, of, all these uh, clusters of parcels. So what happened is that in 1920, we projected a set, set dollar amount and we received another set of dollars amount. Before I talk about the actual receipts for 1920, I just want to point to a trend here so you can see this. Going back to 1516, and I have several columns because my spreadsheet can go to like 24 columns, but you can mm -hmm. see in here you know, even going back a few years, the projection is this, like 15, 16, it's one set of values. The actual receipts is a lot more. Can you see it though? I just want to make sure. Okay, all right. Uh, going to the years 16, 17, same thing, 23.1 million, and we received actually 23.5, right? And going through 18, 19, um, 26.2, and we received uh, 26.573. Now, 1920, um, we projected uh, the, at that time is 27.8, but what we said was because of the trend with all the algorithms that, you know, that we use and apply, showing that at least about $300,000 more at the end of the year when we close the books and we get all the uh, December, the uh, April and also miscellaneous receipts in between from the auditor controls office. Something happened in 1920. If you recall in April when we share with the board that, you know, um, that at that time it was almost half a million dollars that we have not received, right? As of April, it came in so short. So we waited, we waited, and we waited. And in June, it still didn't come. So what we come by in coincidence, we heard from uh, our neighbor, uh, school district Carmel, that uh, there was a solar issue, uh, flat, it's called California flat solar. So upon request or inquiry with the assessor and the AC office, we found that um, the solar farm did not pay the assessed valuation because they disagree with the assessor. So what does that mean? Well, it, it means all those um, LEAs within that clusters of uh, impacted by the solar will get less dollars. Um, that includes for us as, uh, two basic school districts. And the unfortunate part is that we do not know at this point we will ever receive that money or whether that's truly the solar or not because the AC of office does not do corrections and neither the successor. So what we found out is that property tax, as you can see in here, um, the column T was the budget that we did for um, 1920, $28.12 million. 
the actual receipt came in 27.8. So we're $305,000 less than projection. Uh. Each time in seven or eight years. Last year, we only were $10,000 difference. Was that, as a matter of fact, was $10,800 out of $26 million. So um, it's a bit frustrated to say the least um, because uh, we have requested to make uh, to uh, for uh, the revised uh, TRAs, but then uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, those two agencies do not give revised uh, uh, TRAs. So we do not know whether what really is that cost. Was it truly the solar farm or is it something else? Uh, we have received uh, penalties and delinquencies, so a bit higher than usual, but it's not met, not that high. It's about sixty plus thousand, sixty one thousand dollars. In prior years, we received about forty two thousand. So it's not really delinquent, as you know. The state, um, the county extended, right? You know, people do file the income tax, but not necessarily property tax. So, um, so this is where we are now, right now. We short um, by three hundred five thousand um, dollars. Just based on projection for 1920. Yeah. So I'm going to let that rest for any questions before I just before I talk about how that impacts 2021. Um, board, go ahead and speak up if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll let Song continue. Go ahead, Song. I think okay. you're okay. All right, so um, what does it mean for 2021? So um, in a in, um, couple of um, months, um, three board meetings, we'll present a revision of the budget. It will impact somewhat at 2021. Instead of expected going to seven year or eight year trend of maybe $300,000 more, we have to reduce our budget because this is what we projected, $2,254,822 based on the information we had um, in June. Remember, we, the, uh, we, uh, the board approved that in the first board meeting in June. So that's the 29.2. And as, this point, as of this point, we based on the new TRA's uh, projection is, on, is going to be only 29.2. Now, if the trend, if we're going to bang on, take a risk on prior year's trend, other than the exception last year, we can project a little bit more. But I think the risk is pretty high, given the last year's actual receipt came in so much lower, and we do not know at this point how much of the solar farm impact uh, is um, on the basic school districts. So our recommendation at this point, we're gonna reduce our budget by about $54,000, and this is not that huge. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of, really projecting higher by about $300,000. So again, we normally we would go with a little bit higher because the actual receipts always, you know, would come in uh, higher than projection. But given experience of this year, 1920, we're gonna stay, we're gonna stay very, very uh, close to what the TRAs are uh, calculating at this point. That's it for about the property tax dollars. Okay. Thank you, Song. Um, Board, do you have any questions? Um, I know this is a subject that we, we get a lot of information on and um, detail. Um, Christy, do you have anything additional you well, want to ask? I'm eager to see um, if there are any changes that, that you might be seeing. As you say, by the time we have the Oct October meeting is when we go over this again, right, Song? Okay. Yes. Eager to see that. Thank you for your good work. And just to share with the board, we'll pursue this. We, um, we're working closely with Carmel um, to see whether there are other um, avenues we can dive this a little bit deep, deeper. Um, you know, if it's not directly from the reports, but whether we can figure out collectively where we can pursue and really get to the bottom of this. So we will we'll certainly share with the board. And um, just for the for the public, it's um, Carmel because they're on the same basic aid as we are. That's correct. Um, John, Pav, you have anything? Well, Song, thank you very much for walking through this. And you and I have been through this once already, and I didn't get an answer either. 
Um, I, I think I'd like to just comment to the effect that uh, the difference in solar, um, what is it, solar flats down there? Yes. Flat solar mm -hmm. uh, went from a 400 million, I believe, my recollection, uh, valuation to 71 million because of various federal and state tax credits. So that difference is our portion. So the tax base went from uh, millions to, uh, you know, about 7 million total, tens of millions to 7, uh, to seven million. And that gets distributed among, uh, I, I assume, the entire county. Um, so unbeknownst to, mo to me, for sure, I shouldn't say everyone, but there's a billion dollar solar farm in South County, just north of the uh, SLO border, uh, which seems like it would be cool to fly over and see what it looks like. Um, but they, uh, they were not valued correctly. Now, what we have heard, um, and again, Song has, has stated this, but I'll restate it. Uh, the valuation was wrong for 2019-20, but will be correct in what uh, Bagnini has provided to us. So these numbers should be a little more constant this year. We shouldn't see that drop. But I think you are wise to be cautious. Thanks, John. Um, Brian. Um, I've got nothing more to add, really. I just, uh, you know, it's troubling. Um, but I want to thank Song for, you know, we've known about this for a while, and you've done a great job of uh, keeping us in the loop on it as this whole thing sort of unraveled. My concerns remain <laughs> um, about the next few years and this just adds to them really i mean it's uh i think that there's a little bit of trouble on the horizon uh financially and we need to gird our loins can i say that well you just did <laughs> you that. can I, okay. I started to start oh. it's like i don't know if that's appropriate to say it, but <laughs> Well, I was thinking uh, the taxes are always like following the bouncing ball, and sometimes it bounces really high. Um, John Walton, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I think it was well explained. Thank you, Song. You know, I, I just appreciate that we all, I think, recognize that, you know, caution is warranted because numbers tend to move around. And when we originally approve budgets, it's all estimates best based mm -hmm. on past history and guesses for the future and you know we we do our best but it's good to leave a buffer in there because um you don't want to be caught short so i'm glad um i'm glad we have the update and i think we just need to plan accordingly thanks john um okay um we will um open up for public comment if there's any comments or questions regarding this item the um property tax revenues. Okay. I'm seeing none. Uh, we'll go ahead and come back to the board. Thanks again, Song. Um, I know that's an ongoing challenge there. We'll um, move on to the next item, which you're also up for, which is review of the district enrollment projections for the first week of school of 2021. Okay. Last item for me. Um, just very quickly, um, there in the board packet on page 111 and 112, it's just a CBES projection. This is uh, CBES is actually, um, you know, the first Wednesday in October. And this is a projection that, uh, you know, we will see this number of students, um, but we'll adjust when that happens. And this is what we say here is 2021 estimate. And this was actually, um, uh, reported um, to the board and um, it's on a website as well several months ago. Um, so for 2021 uh, estimate um, is 1,968 students inclusive, inclusive of special ed students. So with that, let's take a look at the first day. Uh, real quickly, I just want to talk about the timing. Um, this report, the day one, we ran the report and illuminate Thursday, um, two Thursday ago, um, and because of timing, we have to um, submit the board packet and we have to get printed and so forth. 
Um, the adjustment could happen in between because registration was still going on the Monday and the Tuesday after um, that week. But at that time for day one, we were recording um, 1,936 students, uh, a little bit shorter than projection, but um, I took a look at the, number, uh, the numbers today. It did not fluctuate that much. So it could be really a little bit lower enrollment uh, numbers. Um, so for forest growth, uh, for regular ed, regular ed is 373 plus 21 STC students for a total of 394. Robert Dow is 440 students uh, with, um, this is actually uh, moderate and severe eight students. So total of 448 students. For middle school is 476 uh, and the high school is 612. And um, we show in here uh, April and May, but then as we know, because of the you know, um, COVID-19, didn't really, not really um, regular attendance taking. So this is just the numbers that were recorded um, a few months ago. And we just put here just for like kind of a little bit of comparison of benchmark. Um, whether this um, will actually level up uh, uh, the first day, whether it will go up a little bit in six days, we'll, uh, we'll populate the numbers and we'll bring this report back to the board so it can see the six. And then the next one, we always pick somewhere uh, in the middle of September and the next one would be CBS in October. So with that, I think that's it. Um, we do have um, 1920 just for uh, the public if you want to see comparison. Um, but all the prior years records are on our website anywhere. You want to go see 1819, uh, 1718 is all there. It's been all been posted the reports. Let's open up for questions. Okay. Um, Christy? You have uh, questions? No questions. Thank you for letting us see this. And I think with the COVID um, insanity, it's not surprising that we're seeing mm -hmm. a bit of a dip. Jump out. Uh, Song, could you scroll up for me, please? Up. The other, the other up, so that the bottom numbers rise. How's that? Oh. <laughs> so, so we're at nineteen thirty-six. Thirty-six, and we had a prediction of nineteen sixty-eight. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, it's actually as close as that, um, as Christy said, because COVID. You know, a uh, hundred parents threatened to take children out of the district. So um, that actually, you know, that's not as that's not even a significant number at that point. Pretty stable Thanks. population. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it, John. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Okay, uh, Brian. Um, I've got nothing. No, it's a thank you for all the information. They, I, I could look at those for a long, long time. We're all, it's always fascinating just to kind of compare year to year and class to class and watch the bubbles move through. But um, uh, I don't have any questions related to it. Okay. John Walton. Uh, nope. Thank you for the update. Uh, it was interesting to see the numbers uh, like John Paff. I thought maybe they would fluctuate more. Um, I actually thought the numbers would go up, so um, I was surprised to see them go down, but it didn't go down significantly, and uh, appreciate the update. Okay, and uh, you monitor this daily, right? Um, you said some? Uh, well, actually, daily or uh, weekly? Um, for the first month, yes, we monitor a little bit closer. We have the first day, and then we have the sixth day, and then we kind of jump into the next month. So, mm. Um, you know, obviously the first few days going to be, you know, like I said, registrations, you know, illuminate because, you know, families were, you know, probably in the midst of deciding whether, you know, um, DL or someone move mm -hmm. in their town, that kind of things. So we'll be kind of adjusting a little bit. So we'll, we'll be curious, you know, I'll be showing the numbers for the six day and um, we'll see how big of a fluctuation. Okay. Um, I'm curious about the military families. Um, sometimes that really plays a part in our um, enrollment. Do you have any feeling on that this year, given everything going on? 
I didn't hear much about that from the site, school site attendance uh, uh, staff. Um, didn't hear that in my office as well. Um, what actually I read about that in the paper is a lot of families are moving in to Pacific Grove because mm -hmm. they're fleeing the city. As a matter of fact, I heard a couple of physicians that directly that, that I heard from them, they, they actually left um, San Francisco city to come here because of their one workspace. You know, they want already an area instead of tight, compact um, units. You know, they want to be areas where um, they can work and for the kids to do uh, distance learning. So I'm really surprised at the number um, you know, didn't go up as opposed maybe, to it's lower. Yeah, maybe they're still moving. <laughs> it could be, but yeah. Maybe. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, um, any public comment on this item? Okay. I'm no longer allowed to raise my hand. Oh, you're not? No, because well, you're. Was you just yeah. shout it out loud, dude. You're unmuted, so I guess you don't need to. I know, but it, 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 otherwise I have to get your attention by interrupting. I apologize. Oh. So one, <laughs> oh, one, okay. one question on this is, uh, you know, these numbers are, are balanced within a school, but they're not very balanced school to school right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, 70, 70 uh, 10 per grade from Forest Grove to Robert Down is is long-term problematic? Well, it could be because of registration, you know, um, like I said, because these numbers were taken to Thursday and then the following Monday and Tuesday, registration was still happening. Um, so um, I'm gonna run, I plan to run a report um, with the help of Mr. Binder and to make sure that we capture the data correctly as of August, um, on August 12th make sure these numbers, again, is, again, the report, it could be timing in the report, but yes, you're correct, trusty path, when we look at this, you know, 373 as opposed to last year's 421, you know, and what we said that time registration was, was still happening. So it was, um, so we don't know whether this will change, will swing, this forest growth numbers to be higher, and then maybe some of this will drop and what will happen to overall total? Uh, we'll have to take a look. Are we already, uh, I mean, virtually, it simply makes no difference which school you're at. Are we, are we forcing uh, the issue at all at this point? Are we putting people um, in either electronic classroom? Uh, I believe so, yes. Staffing is still per school. Um, the only thing- My bad. So wrong, I, I asked the wrong question, I apologize. Since, since uh, the next person who comes in to say um, fifth grade could easily go into Forest Grove without upsetting any of those, you know, 16 to 17 in a classroom is very easy. Uh, but, but 22 to 23, you know, is a bigger number. Are we, are we simply starting to put people in, into Forest Grove instead of uh, Robert Down or are we still yes. honoring yes, orders? Do. Yes, we do. We do look at because very clearly per board policies uh, is based on space, availability, availability of seats. Um, so we do look at that. But although at this point we didn't, we're not getting that many requests anymore. Since I have settled down a little bit, families and and students, they're already you know into session. Okay. Session. We'll see how it falls. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do have a uh, public comment, uh, Claire Davies. Hi, um, and Buck can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you notice at Forest Grove, we have 21 SDC students and uh, they are on their SDC teachers roster, but they push into general ed at least 51% of their day and there's two to three that are in gen ed almost all day. So that, so if you take a teacher, say Ms. Patel, she's actually serving um, two to three of our SDC students. So that's part of how uh, Buck um, balances the classrooms, understanding that we would have those students 
uh, having their inclusion with their general ed class. Thank you. Okay. Um, see no other hands up. Okay, um, so thank you for all your hard work on all those items. And I know it's not over, it's ongoing. Um, but we will look forward to more information soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, actually we did it. Um, this is our last item, future agenda items. Um, Dr. Porras, um, I believe we all discussed uh, having the resource center um, added. Um, I don't. I don't think the third would be uh, appropriate, but maybe the seventeenth. Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll do the best we can to, to bring it to you within one of those two. Uh, I think it's um, we just need to do a little bit of work groundwork just to see what's possible, um, okay. but we'll we'll not delay it. I know that um, Principal Garcia is very interested in, in it as well. Also, um, I had housing. Uh, kind of follow up with the um, the housing item, and um, I think it's already on the um, future agenda. And then um, finally, the uh, butterfly parade was requested. Kind of a discussion. Oh yeah, yes. And so we need put that on the next meeting. That's, that's yeah. not a board decision, though, is it? It's not for us. That's 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 set elsewhere. We don't decide if there's a butterfly parade or a butterfly bazaar. Good point. Isn't that really? Well, I thought the, the parade was between the district and the city. Yeah, it's, it's really sort of, a, it's sort of morphed itself into a district sponsored event as our classrooms are all participating in it. Um, I think the bazaar itself is not ours, but the parade itself, we are involved enough in that I think, um, I think it's reasonable to assume that we probably are not going to be able to host it because of just what's happening with COVID at this point. Um, but I think it would be appropriate to have the board give some direction in regards to um, whether or not the staff should engage in supporting it at this point, because a lot of a lot of time and attention goes into it from all of our staff. That's my, that's my feeling on it. Yeah, the PTAs are uh, do the Butterfly Bazaar, so um, we should uh, maybe get, um, well, there's Matt Kelly. Go I'm, ahead, I'm Matt. being a little thick, Ralph. I didn't understand what you said. Well, I think we, we participate enough in it as an organizer um, because all of our students are involved in it, in the parade itself. Um, and uh, class time is taken to prepare for it. Um, school materials and resources are used to prepare for it. So I think it's enough to say that, that we have a pretty strong hand in it. Um, and it comes because it's a, a district sponsored event. Um, okay. I, again, I, I think it would be appropriate to get at least some direction from the board in regards to whether or not you'd like to see staff continue to try and make it happen this year as a district event. I know it's, in direction, I think would be sufficient, but again, we may be forced to not be able to do it anyway, regardless of what we want to do. I, I think that answer is, is done and over. It's an October event and you're not, you're not in a position to run anything until November. So, Matt, and Matt, I think that decision, the decision to make, to do it has been made at the sites and at the uh, DO for years. So, yeah. but I'm happy to do it. I'd say do it next meeting. The, the discussion yeah i mean if you need more than that yeah i think the, just it's a done deal so yeah yeah I, I hear what you're saying i agree i think it's just officially um like dr porce was saying officially to kind of give that we're not doing it type of thing uh matt go ahead yeah i, I was gonna uh, interject that it, it may be a good discussion to have we, I, I was gonna bring facilities use um as it relates to covid back or to the board, I don't think we'll be ready for next board meeting, but I think the next board meeting we would, we're going to bring it back. And it basically just has to do with um, what our rights are to deny facilities use. And that's basically what that comes under. Um, the PTA would be asking us to use our facilities and what we could do or what we could or we couldn't do um, as it relates to COVID. So that would probably be where we would have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Dr. Parsh, do you think that's going to come back as an action item or just an information? I think information discussion is fine. I'm not sure that there's a board action really on it, but mm -hmm. um, I, I think we would, I think having the discussion, because if the board feels very strongly that we need to lean one way or another, it would be important for our staff to know. So okay. I don't, I don't, it doesn't need to come as action, but 
but uh, information discussion is appropriate, I think. Okay. And um, on the uh, housing, did you, do we want to put a date on that? Is that why you well, brought that up or? It's on there already as board requested teacher housing to be discussed, to be determined. I don't think, I, th I think it's still to be determined because we're, okay. the forums are still happening. I just heard it being discussed. And if Trustee Walton would like to um, suggest a date, perhaps we could add one. But right now, I think we're still a little bit early on knowing what that date would be. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I had asked about it previously just because I knew it was a conversation, you know, societally we were having in other school districts. I thought it'd be good for us to discuss it. But then, of course, as we already discussed, uh, Pacific Grove is, proactively taking the lead on that, uh, I think we should let them go through their process. We can bring it back anytime if, if the board would like to provide a board input to the Pacific Grove process, then that would be the time to do it. Or if the board wants to wait and see what comes out of the Pacific Grove process, then we could discuss it then. Yeah, I, I, that's probably, I would recommend that waiting to see how that process unfolds. But again, totally up to the board. Okay. Um, board, any other items uh, before I go to public? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, public um, is uh, comment is open on this. If anybody has any uh, future agenda items that they'd like to um, request, going once, going twice. Okay. I'll bring it back. Uh, thank you all. So we have a um, couple items there added, and um, I guess that's it, right? Uh, Debbie? Yeah. So in that discussion, we heard two different things. One is uh, Matt Kelly saying uh, we need to talk about facilities in COVID. And the other is talk about the Butterfly Parade and Bazaar. The Butterfly mm -hmm. Parade and Bazaar, as Ralph points out, uh, is a strong interaction with our teacher and educational process. So I would, if at all possible, we can separate them. Matt said he's not going to be ready next, next meeting, but I would bring that back as soon as possible. Well, I mean, what I heard was the well, for the for the bazaar only that they would have to fill out a facility use permit, and then that discussion would have to happen based on that approval or not because of COVID. Um, I don't think it needs board action, though. Matt, is that correct or no? Um, but probably would needs board action from the uh, the class that I sat in last week was how, how the board wants to deal with um, outside or even inside uh, people requesting our facilities for use. Um, and there's, there's, some, um, there's some legal things where, and who we can still rent to and who we can say absolutely not to rent to. And um, the class was put on by Lozano Smith and um, they just had some recommendations like, you know, if, if, if a church group is still asking to use our facilities um, legally, there's still maybe some, we may still have to rent to those, those types of groups. So it, it was a more of something I wanted to dive into and bring to the board so you guys could have that information and decide what we want to do with these groups that continue to come to us and ask to use our facilities, especially when there's no when we have all the social distancing and everything. So um, I, we were going to have, um, we were going to review our facilities use language and see where, where we stood with that. Okay. So that is a separate item then. Yeah. Okay. It, it's a separate item, but you know, the bazaar does fall into when they come and they ask us to, they, they do have to have a facilities use permit when they ask us to use our, to use rubber down for the bazaar. And so at that point, it would be um, up to us and Song's office to say yes or no, because dot, dot, dot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. we, just, we just need to make sure legally we can say no and still um, be under the Civic Center Act. Correct, Ralph? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah, okay. So maybe September 17th, we'll put data on that then? Yeah, it, it, and you know, I'll try to get it together faster. And if we can get, it, if I can get it on the next one, I'll, I'll shoot for that. Um, let me see what I can do in the next few days. Okay, okay. John, does that work for you? Is that well, I, I, I would just say that we should provide the answer for the bazaar. Uh, it's an independent question. If if we are responsible in some manner for it, we get to decide it, and we yeah. don't have to wait for the facilities. So I would do that on September third, uh, no matter what. 
Okay. So um, it could be the same conversation as the parade. It, yes, it could. Yes. Yeah. And Matt, okay. Matt doesn't have to present at the same time. Okay. All right. Well, that's um, the end of the agenda. Um, thank you all for participating. And um, I know we said a few times this, this evening, but thank you so much to the teachers and the administration and the classified staff, everybody, just thank you so much for all you're doing. And I think it's um, uh, everything considered, it went, has gone really smooth. <laughs> um, yeah, district office too, obviously, because yeah, it, it all comes from the top. Yep. Okay. All right, then everybody, thanks again. Take care, stay safe. We'll see you on the third. Bye. Meeting, Bye. Is, meeting is adjourned. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> nice job, Brian. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>